Welcome to a new episode of the Eastern Lariat Podcast. Yosha for news, notes, reviews, and opinions on the world of Japanese pro wrestling here on cagematch.net. I'm your host, Strigger, and the last time I said these words was almost four weeks ago, the last show we did. It was a, it was a different, uh, different scene four weeks ago. The wrestling changes so fast, and you have to keep up all the time, and I tried my best in the last couple of weeks, but I wasn't able to do a show. I had to do a lot of work in the last four weeks, and it happened to be that I didn't really have time to work on the weekends. So I usually take Saturday mornings to uh, correct some tests and stuff like that, but I didn't because I, I had uh, I actually had social gatherings on the weekends, if you believe it or not. I was at 16 karat gold, for example, a couple of weeks ago. So I had to do all the work, like after school, on the afternoons, in the in the late afternoon hours, and so wrestling dropped off for a while for me. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that I'm back now with you to talk about the perfectly normal world of professional wrestling, like we figured out on the on the uh, uh, on our talk before the show. Dylan, um, we're back here. We're talking about three topics today. We're talking about stardom, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and All Japan Pro Wrestling. I am excited for this show. I gotta gotta admit, every time before we do a show, I'm uh, I feel some anxiety before these shows. I, I've said that before too, but I'm uh, I always turn it around into a positive anxiety because I'm always excited as well when we get into the topics that we have for for these shows. I missed you, man. I've missed you too. We we all missed you for sure. You know, first of all, I hope you had fun at WSW 16 Carat. Ambition. Oh, yeah. I got to see some of the Japanese wrestlers we've talked about on there. WXW has always been one of the forerunners in terms of uh, bringing in Japanese talent, you know, dating way back, uh, pretty much. And I'm glad that you had such a great time there. Did some cool stuff, and obviously a lot of your social gatherings that you've had, having fun, having friends, must be nice. I don't know what that's like, unfortunately. Oh. But <laughs> I'm your, I'm your, I'm your friend. We, we, this is kind of a social gathering as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two people yeah. doing a podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, the, 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 all of these will do nowadays. Uh, that, that's a good point as well. But uh, the Eastern Area family are all of my friends right now, and I'm so happy to be back with you talking about wrestling. I feel I was so excited to talk about this show. I never feel anxious uh, coming out to the show, to be honest with you. This is always the one that I feel like. I mean, we, we've obviously done it the longest. Um, the excitement around it, uh, you know, I go back to the awards at the start of the year, still award nominated. They will never take that away from us uh, on the show. I was, I was going to ask, is there, has anything happened uh, now? Because <laughs> I never saw anything that came We won. It. Okay, we won. No, I, I, I don't <laughs> think we did. But uh, if, if, but in my, our minds, we won. If there's no winner, we could declare it for ourselves, right? Sure. Listen, this, this is, this is the style of this show. This is my style. This is Kaioken times 10. Masinko Master. It's a disaster. Call me the Kid Key Blaster. Rest in peace, Toriyama. Holy shit. Holy shit. Who came in. Hey, listen, Son Gohan meant so much to me oh, yeah. as a child. Man. Uh, I've got so many memories of Dragon Ball in, in my life. Uh, so seeing Akira Toriyama pass away and all of the, like, you know, you've got whole countries, t- like, giving statements, China and Mexico and, and all of Latin America, Dragon Ball so popular with and, and me as a child. So when that happened, uh, that's something that happened while we were recording and everything. I was just thinking so many memories. Like, you know, if we were to do a show or just to sit together and talk, I could literally go over every saga of Dragon Ball <laughs> in, like, perfect memory. Like, that that's how important that show was. Uh, I remember last year. They came out with the movie uh, Superhero uh, because yeah, they, you know, I'll have to watch that eventually. Yes. Oh, and for me it was so special because it was all about Gohan, and uh, I, I don't know if you ever watched like Super or anything like that. No, I only uh, watched Z, but I'm uh, I found a website where I could actually catch up on on what what's the show after Z? Was it uh, GT? GT, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
See, that, that thing about GT is very funny. Uh, so Z happened, and everyone loves that. And they they had the original Dragon Ball even before that. Yeah. But uh, Z was the one that was really the most popular. Mm-hmm. I think we, we can all agree with that. Uh, all over the world. You, you're in Germany watching it. I'm in America. People, all my friends have heard of this, you know, even if you're not a fan of anything, <laughs> pretty much. GT, Toriyama, I don't think was involved with, or he didn't write, or something happened. And a lot of people didn't like GT. I see. Okay. Um, and then they did the live action Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Evolution, which was so bad. <laughs> Toriyama, Toriyama said, all right, I can't leave it like this. I have to bounce back. I, I, I can't let Dragon Ball go out like this. So he came back with Super, which is a whole other show, which was not as good as Z either, to be honest with you, I, in, my, in my personal opinion. And particularly for Gohan, my favorite character of Z, they basically made him a nerd. <laughs> like, it, it's Super. Like, you know, he's like, I, you know, I don't want to fight and all this. So then they came out with Superhero last year, and they, like, beefed him up again. It was like a guy who... Like, a guy we loved so much in the past, then he got deep pushed for a while. Like, you know, for a few <sighs> years, he hasn't been doing anything. And then he rises up again. They gave Gohan his special beast mode transformation into Super Saiyan. It was freaking awesome. And I was in the theater watching that. I was, like, shaking. Like, like a, a little kid, I was like, yes! Like, like Gohan is back! This is, this is my jam! Gohan and Cell, one of the most amazing moments in all of TV, not just Dragon Ball or, or anime. Like, one of the most, most amazing moments ever when Gohan beats Cell. Uh, I still feel that way. Uh, I actually got the... Uh, a game they had. They made it on... Uh, if any of you PlayStation fans out there, if you got PlayStation Plus, uh, the higher level or whatever, where you get the catalog, they have Kakarot on there for free if you've already got Plus. And I downloaded that, and I've started to play the whole story again of Dragon Ball Z on the, on the game. And I remember everything. Like I remember what happened. I remember what happens next. Uh, I remember when Cell showed up. And, and it was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a big changing moment of the show. Yeah, and the, the writing was so brilliant because leading up to that, they built this whole deal on the Frieza saga where it was the most epic thing ever. Goku right. had to blow up an entire planet like, and, and escape to do it. And the first thing we see coming back is that three months later, everyone's on Earth. The gang is back. They wish them with the Dragon Balls, all the Namekians. And then they realize that Frieza's come to Earth. Like, he survived everything. And they show Frieza. He's like half cyborg. His dad, King Cold, is there. Everybody thinks – even there's a part where Vegeta's like – I just want to be clear to everyone, Earth is toast. <laughs> and, and, like, they're basically like, we're all dead. Freeze is here. It, it's crazy. Then what do we see? A new character who we've never even seen before is, shows up here. And they talk about him, and they're like, his power level is only five. He's a loser. And then he goes Super Saiyan, which they built up, like, through an entire year of the show of Goku going Super Saiyan. Then this new guy goes Super Saiyan five seconds into his appearance, <laughs> kills Frieza, cuts his ass in half, and his dad, and blows up his ship. <laughs> and we were like, who is this man? He talks about androids are coming in. They're the most dangerous thing. He came from the future. They ruined everything. And that whole deal with the androids, they took three years of them training. Goku had to overcome his heart virus to get there. They built this whole thing with the androids, only to suddenly switch to sell an even bigger, like, the real villain that was hidden this whole time came in. Ah. Dragon Ball, man. I have so many memories. Like I said, I could talk about Dylan, this for five so, hours. such superb storytelling. I wish Akira Toriyama had been a pro wrestling writer. God, can you imagine if, if, if he was... I mean, I don't know. I'll say this. There were a lot of wrestling references in Dragon Ball in his yeah. writing, to be honest. Uh, and a lot of... I, in, in turn, a lot of Dragon Ball references in wrestling as well. I think the most prominent was it, clearly... I, it has to be the most important manga in uh, Japanese pro wrestling, at least. There are so many references in uh, uh, Japanese wrestling, like Zero One with the Dragon Balls, Isami Kodaka. It, the entire universe of Basara is based on uh, is based yeah. on uh, Street Fighter and Dragon Ball. <laughs> That's uh, a Tek- great point. Tekken and Dragon Ball, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah Tekken. Uh, uh, yeah, the far superior uh, fighting game yes, to yes. Street Fighter, <laughs> in, in my opinion. But yeah, the, the Zero One, the Dragon Balls, when I first started watching Japanese wrestling, 
I thought that's what made me want to go to there. Like, and I thought they were the number one company because like we have a tournament based around Dragon Balls and yeah. they have the dragon like that, you know, when they made the wishes and everything after you win the tournament. I always wanted that. That was like one of my biggest dreams in wrestling. I wanted to be in that tournament to get that, like just to give, give me the get ball, man. Yeah. 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 I, like, I don't even have to win. I just want to be involved because it was so cool. You got the dragon. Uh, you, you know, it was so influential to wrestling, and so, you know, and Dragon Ball itself, if you really look at it, Dragon Ball Z and Super and even the original is really similar to wrestling in a lot of ways. Because if you look at the original Dragon Ball, it was very, like, down-to-earth, martial arts-based. Mm-hmm. In Z, everyone got superpowers and, like, yeah. went so over the top where you're blowing up planets, people are turning into giant apes. It's crazy as hell, but everybody <laughs> had their, like, for Goku, everybody knows the Kamehameha wave. You know, Krillin, you had the Destructo Disc. Piccolo, you had the Special Beam Cannon. Everyone had their signature moves. Nice. Everyone had kind of their gimmick, their own unique look. Like, when Gohan showed up with Piccolo's gear on, that was a huge deal. <laughs> like, like, for me as a kid, it's like, okay, he doesn't have the Saiyan gear. He has Piccolo's stuff. And it was like everybody had their own moves. It was really a lot like wrestling when you think about it. If you like how they w- work the characters and the fight scenes were obviously like so explosive and crazy as time went along, but everyone had their own moves. You could pick your favorite character out and root for them. Uh-huh. You didn't have to, you know, you didn't have to just root for Goku. There were so many guys. And one of the great lessons I've always took this, this in all honesty, this meant so much to me. I had a thing on the Patreon where I, I, after, like the day after that happened, I did some show. I think it was about stardom, the Cinderella tournament, then the first round. But I got really emotional at the end because there's so many great life lessons in the show. And one thing I always say, if you look at Goku and Dragon Ball Z, every member of the Z Fighters, which was their faction, like in Dragon Ball Z, where you had all the guys, if you look right down the line, everyone brings up Vegeta, obviously, who's like the main Mm -hmm. rival. But if you look at that whole crew, every one of them, outside of Krillin and Gohan, obviously, his son, Every one of them started out as a villain and hated Goku at first. Yep. And then he became their friend afterwards. And I carry that with me in my life. You know, I, I always thought <laughs> about that. Like, you know, even on Twitter, there's been people who have done crazy things, but I've never blocked anybody. You Ooh, know, right. I, I, yeah, I always want to believe, like, just like Goku, and I, I'm not saying I'm obviously as good as him, but I always want to believe even if people are your enemies, they can actually become your friends at some point, uh, just like Goku and, and Dragon Ball Z. And it's something I've carried in my life, in my real life, uh, on the show and everything. And, and they taught you so much. Uh, and Goku always wanted you to try your best at everything. I felt that myself. Uh, you know, even with Goku, the part that everybody always criticizes him for as a father, when he gave Cell the Senzu Bean <laughs> against Gohan, uh, that was as a result of him believing in Gohan so much. Uh, you know, there's a part where Gohan's down on himself and he's like, I can't do it. And Goku, who had already died at this point, he's talking to him from King Kai in, in heaven. And he's like, 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 I don't know who told you there's something wrong with you, but there's not. Like, you can do this shit, man. And Goku, like, totally brought him in. And I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> like, I wish you were my dad, Goku. <laughs> like, I, I was really resonated with Gohan because of that moment and that, that scene. So when that happened, that meant so much to me. And, and it's a shame that Toriyama died. It felt like, yeah. you know, I, I lost a part of myself, like, when, when that happened. But I know that the, the thing is, they are going to continue Super. So uh, you should watch the movie, though, uh, yeah. uh, Superhero they had. That, that was a really cool movie. Uh, the show itself... It's up and down. There's some stuff I don't like about the writing. As and I'm obviously writing, watching this as an adult now. When I watched Dragon Ball Z originally, I was a, a small child at this point. So that probably I'm more jaded. But the movie was great. I think you'll love it. Uh, everybody check out uh, Superhero. Check out Gohan. He's back. He's bouncing back. He pulled a Goto on us. Hey, he he's, he's uh-huh. Uh-huh. I know. Yeah. Oh, man. Yes. Goto. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Go, the- Goku. Gohan. Yeah. Goto. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the third member of the family. The GTR. Right huh? huh? The GTR. Yeah, the, yeah, just like GT, even even though we try to pretend that doesn't exist <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but no, yeah, definitely Dragon Ball references all throughout wrestling, and hopefully uh, everybody out there knows what the hell I'm talking about, because if you never saw Dragon Ball, oh, this yeah. whole it, it's going to be I yeah. assume that most of the people that listen to this podcast have watched Dragon Ball. I think it's definitely a big crossover. Uh, yeah, there has to be. There has to be. 
But if only wrestling was so creative, Dylan, these days, uh, we would have uh, much more to talk about here and much more shameful <laughs> stuff to talk about, actually. But we are in a period of Japanese wrestling where it's just it's a, it's an okay period. I mean, we off air we discussed the tag tournaments in Noah and Dragon Gate that are going on right now, and oh, actually the, the Noah one is finished. Yeah, Dragon Gate is still going on, and it, the Dragon Gate one is is okay. I would say I would say the show on the 18th that they put up on YouTube was the best so far. I haven't checked out the Noah one. You uh, you did and. Um, Yeah, apparently it was very okay too. It was remarkably okay. That was how I would <laughs> des describe the Victory Challenge Tag League. Uh, oh, okay. and, and the thing is, they had a great lineup when you look at the names. Yeah, I mean, we, you could argue. Yeah, we talked about that. The lineup was good. And even the Dragon Gate, like Ray De Pereos, is, is a good lineup yep, of, yep, of yep. names. It's just a lot of these shows are smaller, and I don't think they're even trying to, like, That's the thing about these Dragon Gate shows. I mean, I saw it when I was watching one of some of the uh, Susumu and Yamato matches. They were considerably slower than they are when they are in a venue like Kyoto KBS Hall or Korokan Hall. They just moved very much at, at a moderate pace, and it was all worked to towards this live crowd, of course, but... Remember, It's not the usual high-speed Dragon Gate pacing that you're used to when you're watching only Cork and Hall shows. They're workers. They, they know I, the tricks oh. of the trade. <laughs> 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 They're not going to give you Cork and effort, effort at some of these smaller buildings now. Of course not. <laughs> But it's a shame. You know, we were. I was thinking about this. There's been a lot of times recently where, even like for Noah and All Japan, there are times where you'll have world title matches in Cork. Like, mm -hmm. not even... In bigger venues and stuff like that. And it's crazy how, like, that's something that probably wouldn't have happened a lot, a lot in years past. But because of the way things are now, it's kind of by necessity. You're, you're yeah. in that situation. It's been that way for all Japan for a while. But I just, I kind of reminisced on that. Like, wow. Like, these guys are running their, like, to, to, to some of these promotions, Cork could, That's the big show. That's the big show now. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when, you, and, when you, for example, look at the, uh, we went over this zero one real zero one Tochigi Pro stuff. They are apparently split companies, but some of the workers still work for both. Uh, who who knows what's going on there? Yes, who knows? The, right the <laughs> zero one company that's now basically Tochigi Pro Wrestling. They celebrated the twenty third anniversary of zero one. In Kurken, and it, the building was so empty. It was ha such a hard watch. Or even other companies right now, from Big Japan, Freedoms, they can be happy when they draw around 500, 600 people to Kurken Hall uh, for their usual shows. Uh, Ice Ribbon did a show this uh, weekend drawing 550 people. And uh, it's it's right around that what some companies get in this venue. Of course, All Japan, Noah, they do better usually, Dragon Gate as well. But much like you said, it's it's usually the big venue for most of the shows. Some of the companies go to Ottawa. And Dylan, that's um, some of the news bits, or one of the, the few news bits that I have here on this show, is that Ottawa is closing down until the end of the year. All facilities of Ottawa General Gymnasium will be suspended from April 1st to December 27 due to uh, reconstructive measures um, around the building. And that hurts a lot of companies because Ottawa is the next big building after Kirkena Hall. And then they're basically, for most companies, you, of course they can go to Tokyo Dome City Hall, but I guess that's not that cheap to rent. And then that would be Sumo Hall, and most companies... If they run Sumo Hall, it's it's a empty building. Yeah, that's not an option for a lot of these uh, other companies uh, to go to Sumo Hall at this point in time. Uh, you know, I just think about it. You were talking about the Corkin numbers. You know, even on the, the lifespan of this show, you know, there was times, like, you know, the first few years of the show, really, where someone like an ice ribbon, 
that would be considered a very low number mm-hmm. in Quark, in like a 550. But now it's actually a, a, a really positive number compared to what they were doing before, where it was like a pretty significantly lower, even a couple hundred lower. Uh, so for them, that was actually a good number now. Uh, and hopefully, and I root for them, obviously, to get back. And other companies as well, I, I would love if everyone's successful. But we are in this kind of weird period for the grand scheme of of you know, like the world of Japanese wrestling, I think, yeah, like a success now needs to be adjusted from where it was back then, like even five years ago or whatever. Uh, you know, like the the way things are, and hopefully they are making moves. I mean, we're gonna talk about it with New Japan and and stuff. You know, you have to hope that a lot of these companies do make some moves to move forward and build a new era that could be successful. I because I think right now. The last few years, obviously, the pandemic definitely played a role in that. Sure. But, but that's but, uh, that's always yeah. an easy excuse. We always said it. It's an easy excuse to yeah. just blame it, to blame the pandemic on all of that because other forms of entertainment haven't suffered as much as wrestling have. Yeah, and and that's and that's the thing. A lot of it is like they're really sh- shot themselves in the foot a lot of times. And obviously, New Japan is the company leader or the country leader in terms of wrestling is a big part of that. But I mean, we saw it. And even during the pandemic, when stardom was at their heart, hottest, they improved from where they were before the pandemic. Right. And then last year, there was all this turmoil and struggles, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. And things went down again. You know, so you, you can't just say, oh, the pandemic. A lot of it is the result of some underwhelming stuff, like booking the product itself. And, and we're going to talk about New Japan. I've got some takes on this whole company <laughs> coming up. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Because uh, I watched this whole tournament, people. It's documented. I did it on the Patreon. I watched every match, and I proved it. <sighs> and why did I do that? I don't know. I did it for the people. For the people. <laughs> because... <laughs> Listen, if I do it, the the Eastern Larry family, you get the blessing of not having to do it. You know everything going on. I hope, you I hope nobody did. I hope here. they listened to my show, but not watch. They, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I, I want them to listen. I just don't want them to watch the show. That, <laughs> that, that should have been what it was. I should have just posted like a two-minute clip of just a warning. <laughs> like, do not watch this <laughs> uh, uh, on it. But that thing is, though, like I said, there's a lot of companies right now where – Things got really bad and really messy, and then there were some that you know were were in kind of this re- weird purgatory almost, where it's not it's not like it's terrible, but it's not special either. It's not touching your heart, uh, and hopefully we can get yep, into that. That's, and, and, that's and very accurate. There, and I think there are some moves that were made that are an attempt to do that. If you we go through this show, the stuff we're going to talk about, I think these companies are attempting to make something like that. That will be a point that can grab you as a fan. Yeah. Let's uh, let's get into these topics then. Yeah. Stardom, first one. Yeah, the big talking point of Stardom, we'll get to the Cinderella tournament in a bit, here is, of course, that in addition to Julia, she was the first one to say that she's leaving Stardom. We have Utami, Hayashita, Mirai, Mai Sakurai, and Yuzuki, Ruki, are leaving the company at the end of of March, and they will most likely, of course, move on to Rossi Ogawa's new promotion. Uh, that's a whole different topic. Tokyo Sports asked Rossi Ogawa directly if they will join Stardom, and of course, because of all this, these poaching allegations, he just said, you decide who to believe. <laughs> and that is it for, for him. That's what he said about that. I will uh, decide. <laughs> right, right, <you>. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> They are leaving to form this new promotion. A uh, very key guy backstage for Rossi Agao for, uh, for a long time. Sonny Gutierrez, he's leaving as well at the end of March. So they are moving on to this new project. Uh, Dylan, we discussed this briefly off the air. Th- these are five wrestlers now that are leaving. That's, of course, not going to make up a new competitor for stardom. But it's Julia and it's Utami. Uh, Mirai was a key player in the, the last two years as well for stardom that i'm guessing there could be others leaving maybe some contracts are not running out at the end of march some contracts may be running out later in the year or next year even depends on who else is moving and how many other people are moving to this new company what was your first take or what is your take right now on these names that are leaving stardom at the end of the month we had known that julia was going to go 
Uh, that was uh, pretty obvious. Uh, it had been, been talked about for a few months now. Uh, Utami's interesting because she stated that she told them in December right. <laughs> that she that she was leaving, um, which is months before Rossi was relieved of his his stuff. That in February. completely matches the timeline of stardom um, of stardom officials finding out that Rossi is planning something. That's what they said when they fired him, that they found out in December that he's trying to set up something new. And that would completely fit the timeline with Utami then uh, giving him her notice. Well, look, I mean, just logically, these people didn't just all come together by accident. No. <laughs> to to come to the, you know, like that. I mean, that was like, that's obvious that this was in plan. And they had the thing in November where they fired the old president, uh, Harada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... Like I said, last year was a year of turmoil for the whole company. Like, behind the scenes, on the screen, <laughs> injuries. It was a really bad year. And it's such a shame because the years prior, as I said, they were, to me, head and shoulders the best company in, in, in the whole country. Uh, they had great wrestling. Their storylines were logical. You had great title reigns, amazing moments, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, and great successes. But for some reason... Uh, Bushiro decided that they needed to be more involved with things, and their ideas weren't always positive with a lot of people. Uh, and it definitely wasn't positive for the company overall, if you look at how things went. But they fired the president. Then December comes. Rossi, at that point, you could easily see him you know, trying to come up with something uh, that he's planning. Julia, obviously, is a great star. And it's tough, because I love her as a wrestler, And Utami is another one, like a great wrestler. Mirai, love her. Like these are excellent workers in the ring. Mm -hmm. But because of how things worked, and we talked about this on the uh, award show we did, this was like the worst year to me in terms of Joshi nominees. Like nobody was actually a difference maker, in my opinion, like in Joshi Perez last year. Uh, even these great stars, if you look at, at their years, Utami – They got the cage match thing out of her. But outside of that, it's not like she's had this prolific run the, the last two years, really. Uh, you know, she had her great title reign, amazing matches with Shuri, and some good stuff with the tag scene uh, with Aphrodite. But it's not like she was a top player, like, for the last years of, of stardom or anything like that. Mirai, in 2022, she had an amazing run. Like, great matches, the fans were going crazy, like the clap thing, everybody was super over. She looked like one of the best. 2023 came, she started off great. I loved her match with, with Hashimoto uh, that they had. But they put her in the tag team with Ami Saray, and the, the chemistry just wasn't there. It wasn't a good team. Uh, they really stalled her. The white, they gave her the white belt, but they actually didn't put, like, her character was so uninteresting as champion. They didn't really put effort into her. And it makes sense that she would want to, to make a change now. Uh, you could see that she didn't have a lot going on forward. So for the company stardom, I don't think it's like this. I think, honestly, the most surprising person was uh, Yuzuki. Yes. Because she's a, a rookie player. You would think that that's not somebody you would, would think would jump over. But I think it's a great idea. In a way... Uh, in a way, it's the most surprising name, and in another way, it is not, because when you have these kind of walkouts in Japanese wrestling, there usually is a rookie that is in some ways attached to some of the wrestlers that are leaving the company. That happens frequently in, in, in different um, eras of wrestling. That has happened frequently in different eras of wrestling, where a rookie walks out. For example, like when um, Manabu Soya came to All Japan Pro Wrestling for the first time. He came there because Usamu Nishimura, his teacher, was leaving tradition at the point, or Muga World Pro Wrestling it was at the point. And Soya was a name that had just debuted for Muga and went on to All Japan Pro Wrestling. And of course, now he's in Noah. And with Yuzuki, she has probably ties with some of the people that are leaving the company. And so she, she figured, um, this isn't the environment that I want to be in, and I'm trying this new thing. Well, she's most closely allied with Mayu Iwatani. Uh, so, like, you know, and the thing with Iwatani, the movie is really what's stopping all, all of that. Yeah. And I think, as I understand it, a similar thing is true with Shuri, who appear, appears in the movie as well. 
she plays Kagetsu actually in, in the movie. <laughs> um, I, as I understand it, that's something that's in the way, and who knows? I, I had heard that, you know, I, I knew Mirai was on the way out, uh, you know, and I'd already heard that myself actually, uh, and sh- she obviously was. She said it publicly, uh, and it came out that she is. I, as I understand it, there would have been more. But actually, Bushiroad gave some people some raises in their contracts. I see. Uh, when that's the problem with this, like with Rossi's outfit, Bushiroad has money. And so if somebody <sighs> wants to jump, they can make things happen. And, you know, you see the tournament booking of Cinderella tournament was so interesting when you look yeah. at it. Because uh, there were some people that went out very early uh, and they pulled some upsets. And obviously Hanan, and we, we know, we'll get to that. That was its own thing. Some other people you would think, huh, you know, like this, like this was very weird. They would have them go out this way. But the company itself is actually kind of interesting when you look at it because you can analyze the company based on the on-screen product. But also you have it in your mind to think about, like, who's going to leave, who's going to go to Rossi's deal. The five that they got, as I said, Julia, Utami, Mirai. That is a great three musketeers, so to speak, mm-hmm. uh, to, to start your company around. Like all three of them have great things. I don't think they've been used to their best of their abilities. Uh, really, really none of them, I would say, in the last year. And Utami for a while now. But in the ring, they're great. Julia, like she has everything you want uh, to be the, the company leader uh, to start off. Sakurai is not a great worker, but is a good character worker that she was able to get over uh, in her gimmick uh, as her, you know, her highness. And Yuzuki, great working. She, she was probably the best, and Stardom has a great rookie crop, actually. They have a lot of great young people. That's something they really have improved on the last few months. Yeah, I watched the match that she had with Mayu Iwatani on this final tournament day, and uh, I was really impressed with what she got to do inside the ring, especially when you compare it to, uh, to rookies that New Japan Pro Wrestling train they get to do so many, so much less stuff inside the ring, and uh, she was very impressive here. That was a big thing when uh, they were talking about the Young Lion outfit in New Japan, how they mm-hmm. wanted them to be more like stardom. Right. Uh, you know, you can make stars a lot faster there, and why aren't we doing it here? It's a very really logical thing, to be honest with you. But, yeah, Yuzuki's great uh, for a young wrestler. I like a lot of their rookies. Like I said, I think they have a bright future uh, with people like Yagami. I think has a, such a unique style. Um, you know, they've got a lot of great people, but only five people. It was a little low, but I do think there will be people later, yes. uh, you know, like that, that come in. I don't know how many, though. Like I said, I think that they're going to do everything they can to keep as many people as, as, as possible. And I think they've already done it. Uh, you know, there were some people that probably would have left, but then they, they got some reasons to stay, uh, I would say. And we'll see how that plays out in terms of, okay, you got them back now. How will you use them? Because, like I said, in the tournament, there were some people that you would think you would want to to put a focus on, and they were out very early. Uh, yeah, it's, let's let's look at some of the names that were out. Let's look at the second round, I think. I think the second round is more telling than the first round with um, Saya Ida, Yuna Mitsumori, Mirai, and Zuzu Suzuki going out in the second round on the first show. And then we had Hazuki, Wakatsukiyama, Mai Sakurai, and uh, Saya Kakura going out in the in the second round. Is there some of these names, from these names, Dylan, is there anyone that you would think would be joining next for the new promotion? Um, no, because like I said, I think they paid them off to stay. To stay. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the ones that were surprising, especially not just Hazuki, but actually if you look at the way they did it, Ruaka beat her tag partner in the first round, Koguma, mm-hmm. and then beat Hazuki in the second round. And Ruaka is not a star character in, 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 in stardom, uh, with all due respect to her, nothing against her. But it was definitely an, a, a surprising run if it, everything were normal, so to speak. Uh, but I do think that ultimately they'll stay. But if they were to go, it wouldn't surprise me. I even said uh, on a show prior... People like those two in particular were around basically very early on in Stardom's conception. You know, like they they were around 10 years ago. Uh, You know, there are people that you would look at that may have an affinity for Rossi and loyalty to him. I think Suzu losing, 
it's a little weird, but also is somewhat logical anyway, because she already had her title shot <laughs> and stuff pretty much anyway. You know, you weren't going to have her win the Cinderella. They do a lot of upsets in the tournament most years regardless. So it is interesting. That's a name that a lot of people were speculating on. But it seems like she'll stay at, at the moment and, and maybe later, you know, in the next year or so, you know, in a few months, you know, I, I've I've heard that it will be before the start of the summer, you know, before July, before June, whenever mm-hmm. they do it, whenever this goes, this Rossi thing. The six months to a year after that, when these contracts roll over again, who's to say how much could change oh, in man. that time? Yes. You, you know, I, and, and who's to say that this new startup that Rossi is, Rossi Gawa is trying will be successful in the end? There's no guarantee for that. And that's one of the biggest changes that there could be made. Like right now, it seems like it's a great thing to, to come into this hot new product, mm-hmm. but it's a really hard time to start a company right now. Kind of to go back to what we started off the show with. Mm-hmm. I don't think this is a great time to start a, a wrestling company in Japan. Uh, obviously, there were circumstances that kind of forced their hands that it had to be now. But look at the struggles um, Glade has had. Yes, exactly. Starting in, in, in the pandemic. I think in terms of fan support and, and touching people's hearts and getting lifelong fans and sturdy group of supporters, I think now is a really hard time. And I think Rossi's group, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to start off. Uh, yeah, and, and listen, these five people, yes, it's a good core group. Like you've got a lot of things, great talent, main eventers. Julie is one of the, one of the biggest stars, if not the biggest in Joshi. But we know he's also going to use freelancers. They've already said that uh, pretty yeah. much, or it's always been, it's already been talked about that that's going to happen. Uh, they're going to bring in people. We don't know who's aligned with them. Uh, we saw with Stardom, they locked up uh, Ano <laughs> to a contract as well uh, already. You know, there's going to be people that want to make sure, hey, if you work with Rossi's group, we don't want you here <laughs> and Stardom. These kind of politics are very normal. In, sure, in, sure. It's split ups and things like that. It's not anything we haven't seen before, kind of what you were alluding to earlier. I think this one's a little interesting because of the specific backstory of it all. But overall, I think that, like I said, Yuzuki was a surprise. The other ones all make a, a relatively relative degree of sense. We'll see what comes of it. You know, you look at, at you know, there's a lot of great talent on the indies as well. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Who's going to work with who? I mean, there's already been that stuff with AEW suddenly working with Stardom and, and, <laughs> and, and Tony Khan talking mad trash on Sean Rossi when he, when he left on Twitter to like basically bury them on publicly. There could be, you know, who's to say a lot of these companies didn't have heat. Will Stardom's guys try to spin it that, hey, this is a different group now. We can work with other companies better. Like we'll work with a Tokyo Joshi Pro or an Ice Ribbon. We don't know. That's That's interesting because... Prominence, for example, is a group that came together of wrestlers leaving Ice Ribbon a couple of years ago. Yeah. And they started their own thing. They got some shows on Wrestle Universe. But now, after two years, after the second anniversary, they said they were discontinuing their monthly show. They always ran Shinkiba First Ring and, got to say, not very successful. It was always in between 100 and 200 people in the audience um, and that project didn't really work out in the way that it, that they thought it would, I gotta assume. So it's going to be really interesting what this new thing that Rossi Ogawa is starting has in the background. The I, I was thinking about it. If they could get a deal with Wrestle Universe going, that would be great for them. It would be a uh, would be a streaming service they are on. They would be visible to audiences uh, internationally. Then I was thinking about, okay, yeah, man, um, TJPW is on Wrestle Universe, and I don't know yeah. if, if they would want them on there. But then again, I don't think that TJPW to Cyberfight is important enough to rule out that stardom or that the new group that Rossi is uh, opening up could just drop their shows on their streaming service. So that would be a uh, a good opportunity for them. Um, but it all depends what kind of backing Rossi Ogawa has. And I've got to assume that he has 
sponsors uh, in his in his back pocket from uh, the years that he has been in the business just depends on who wants to invest money in pro wrestling in, during these times now exactly that that's why you're seeing like that's why there weren't more people that left <laughs> bushi road mm-hmm. has all of the, like the deep pockets <laughs> they could get in but from what i and understand the other one. important point of course is julia she's leaving for rossi now but is she going to america in a year or two Yeah, I mean, you have to speculate that's gonna that that would happen. I, I would say, uh, we. I mean, it, it, the thing is, she's not going to AEW, like you know, for yeah. for, for all for all kinds of reasons. She's not going to go there to be an indie wrestler. So, like, what WWE is such a weird, like, unstable company in, in their own right that they may want her now. They may view it as a sign of disrespect that, you know, like we certainly we've heard with a lot of the free agents that AEW signed. WWE's whole pitch was, well, we're WWE. Like you can come to us. We don't have to pay you that much, like as much as AEW. We've got WrestleMania. And like, a lot of these new wrestlers are like, we don't care. Like we want to get paid. <laughs> like we want the most money uh, overall. Uh, WWE, they just think they're number one and everyone's going to go to that. And how dare you not like bow to our wishes? So if they see somebody that did her own thing, who's to say that that somebody won't get angry or people will get fired? There, people running the company, uh, the, the whole new regime would come in. Nobody can predict what's going to happen in a year or two with that company specifically, with all of their legal issues right now uh, that they have. Like, there's no telling. Ari Emanuel might just be like, "Look, we're getting rid of everybody <laughs> in, in this," uh, and then. Who knows what could come? So it's a very unstable wrestling in and of itself. Even in the best of times, is a very unstable thing to be a part of. But especially right now, there's almost no stability anywhere you look. And as far as Tokyo Joshi Pro, it's really just going to come down to which side has more heat with them. <laughs> do they blame Rossi or do they blame the company? Like, can one of these guys talk their way into working with them? Are they even that interested in? Well, listen, uh, there was that thing coming up about the Budokan show coming up in May, which both Stardom and Tokyo Joshi Pro are a part of the the nine companies mm-hmm. deal. So that kind of tells you right there. I think it would be kind of hard for Rossi to get in like with them that way. But you know, who knows? For all we know, that may have because we kind of talked about when that was announced. We expect there to be the first show. After that, we'll see. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Like, who's to say? <laughs> we'll say about that. that. And that's what I'm saying. There's so much up in the air, so many questions for the next year, which is somewhat intriguing as a fan. You know, if you're into the the backstage way of looking at things and who's going to jump where, I think in any form of wrestling, that's always exciting. Me personally, there's no way you can say for sure or make a super accurate prediction. But from what I've been told, what I know, what I understand. I do think Iwatani and Shuri will be in Ross's company one day. <laughs> to, to, to I would say be the least. shocked if they wouldn't. To be honest, and you know, and you'd have to think there are some but, people, but for the time being, with these five wrestlers, yeah, there is no way that they could put up a touring schedule no. like the big companies have in Japan. It, they could do, let's say. Three to five shows a month. That's top. Maybe do, yeah. they'll they start with monthly shows first, because you mentioned it. They will have to use freelance talent, and they ha- will need the freelance talent to be free on these dates that they want to run. And uh, of course, the it's it's of course another point of that is, will these five that left Stardom now be free to work other companies as well? I mean. Like I'm just throwing this around. Like Julia going, for example, to DDT, working there, that would be something. Or going to other jo- Yoshi companies, that would be something too. Uh, Mirai going back to TJPW? Question mark. Doing stints there. Everything, everything, and nothing at the same time seem possible right now. I just think it's going to be tough for the for the Rossi people to work with Tokyo Joshi Pro because they're aligned with Stardom right now. Uh, ultimately, so I just I. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe Rossi will talk his way <laughs> into all of this. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible, 
But it's not something I would expect if you look at the lay of the landscape right now. And again, maybe in a year's time, like everything could be different. So I'm not saying forever it'll never happen. I think right away I don't personally expect that. But hey, like I said, Rossi is a, a like he's done these things before. <laughs> you know, he started the company. Look at uh, All Japan Women's and uh, Arceon afterwards. Like we saw people leave there, and this is he's kind of running a very similar playbook. <laughs> if you look at how Arceon started. And I think he's wanting to recreate that in a lot of ways. We'll see how it goes, uh, you know, coming in there. I definitely think he'll work with freelancers. Uh, he'll try to work with other companies. But actually, also, Stardom has worked with other companies a lot more the last couple of years as well. And again, we don't know if maybe Rossi was pushing for that, uh, where people at Bushy Road wanted to do that. We can't say for sure. But I think like if Stardom tries to throw blocks around, you know, and you could see that totally happening. It's going to be tough for them, so I think they're going to focus on these five, get whatever freelancers they can that will be regulars for the company. And there's a lot of great talent out there uh, for sure that you can look at. Stardom, I mean, recently they, they just had Hashimoto and Sari uh, on their show. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you had a great match too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, the tag match they had. But they're trying – you can see they're trying to work with all these, these different people and get their ducks in a row, I think, before Rossi makes whatever his moves are. Uh, here, So I think it's really smart game planning from Bushiroad, how they've handled it, actually. Um, I mean, it sucks that they've lost the people they've had, but they booked them in such a way last year that it minimized their impact. Mm, uh, and, I think right, point, yeah. and I think right now, uh, it's just like I said, it's a hard time to start a company. So we'll see. You don't want to doubt Rossi. He's made it, he's made it work a couple of times <laughs> doing these new companies. Uh, he might have something up his sleeve that – Nobody expects, you know, some big names that, you know, nobody even thought of or some moves. And it's very possible. But right now, I just think it's a really tough start for him. And uh, with stardom, I think they've come ahead. Anybody they wanted to keep, they've kept ultimately. So you have to think that that's a win, yeah. at least for right now. They are building heavily around Micah. Micah got the big win over Hutami Hayashishita at the final show of the Cinderella tournament. It wasn't actually the main event above the Cinderella tournament finals, which of course was very logical when you look at yeah. who was in the matches. Micah versus <laughs> yeah. Hutami and Hanan versus Ami Sore. So Micah got a huge entrance there as well. She's been pushed as the main person in this promotion right now and she's carrying on the World of Stardom Championship. Hanan won the Cinderella tournament. I thought the best match of the tournament was the one that she had with Starlight Kid. That's what I enjoyed the most. Semi-finals, um, Asumi was very good as well against Biu Amasaki. Uh, other than that, most of the matches I thought were pretty okay. Nothing that really stood out to me in any way. Hanan, though, her way throughout the tournament uh, to follow that was very fun. I thought that she gained a lot throughout this tournament, that she gained a lot of uh, self, self-esteem um, as well there, um, winning this tournament and being in a prominent position. Really for the first time in her career, she was uh, up that far in the card. And uh, her winning is another sign who they will be focusing on uh, in this year, I guess, Dylan. To me... I thought Hanan versus Mirai was the best match. Uh, that was like that was very good one. too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was it. It was surprising how, how they did it uh, as as well at the time. And like I said, I already knew Mirai was leaving, so it actually wasn't that surprising to me. Mm-hmm. But they they worked it in such a great way where it really put, like had a great shock factor to it. <laughs> I thought it was great when you look at how they used her. It's a little surprising in, in a lot of ways because you know you look at it. You had Starlight and Azumi there who have been around for so long and have never gotten a win like this. Yeah. And then you give it to Hanan. Mm-hmm. I just think that's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like what I said about people maybe who w- were going to leave uh, before. <laughs> that felt like a little bit of a message being sent. And that's another problem. That, again, what I said about respect, it's not just WWE who thinks that way. Maybe there were some people that wanted to leave and need to be put in their place now, uh, according to that. Um, I just, Hanan. I mean, she's a great young talent, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just, like I said, you have other people here that are more experienced that haven't had their moment. And it feels like she kind of jumped in line. Yeah, exactly. She's overlapping. Mm -hmm. 
And I mean, Ami Saray, God bless her. But <laughs> like, like why, why couldn't this have been Azumi in, in the final uh, overall? That was very surprising as well that Azumi. I hadn't read the results prior, and I saw the semifinals, and I was saying, okay, yeah, Hanan versus Azumi makes a lot of sense, but no. And the, and the way they did it, Ru, Ruwaka going another way, mm. it's like it's clear that whole block was meant to push these two very young talents as like a heel baby face yep. type of you know thing. But the problem is, is that like Ruwaka is not ready <laughs> no. for that. No. With, with again, and I don't want to be mean, but because uh, these are, I mean, they're a little older now. They're they're like late. Te- like like nineteen or something mm-hmm. like that now nineteen twenty like Ozumi is only like what twenty two and she's been around ten years <laughs> you know, like like I would say there's age old and then there's wrestler old uh, or like wrestler young as well and Sumi is a veteran now yeah, exactly Ozumi is is wrestler old <laughs> like even though she's like only twenty two it's it's crazy how that works you know but. I don't know. Like I, I don't know what they're doing. To, to be honest with you, I, I was really surprised by that whole sign of the bracket. Mm-hmm. I, and I'll tell you this though, that Cinderella tournament final, uh, that show, you had Julia and Tom as their yep. last match or what? Right. And yeah. I, that was a very surprising finish to me as well that they went to a time limit draw. Oh, I thought it was like perfectly made sense. Like I totally expected that uh, when they had the match. I was like, this is going to end in a draw for sure. Mm. <laughs> and they did it. The match itself was like good enough. I mean, they they did their thing. It wasn't that great, to be honest with you, but it, it was good. Like it was a totally fine match uh, of their style. I mean, when, uh, when that, you when you when you see the time limit that they got, I guess yeah, that that told you. Yeah, like I said, and plus Julia's leaving. She's not going to job on her way out to to Tom. Like, like and they weren't going to put Tom under. Yeah, she <laughs> she she did the job to Stephanie Vaquer though uh, for the strong title. Um, Boy, what a mess that was! What? A, yeah, the oh, Jesus, the finish totally sucked. The match itself wasn't good either. Ah, uh, yeah. That's... The thing is, I thought the match was good until the finish. That also happened nine minutes into the match. Uh, well, that's you... the thing, though. I think the match was on a moderate level, get, getting to go in a, in a different direction, and then it just ended. Yeah, and like I said, because on your on paper you think of those two having this epic match. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and this was not it at all. And the finish was mm-hmm. awful. And then the post match was just uh, like uh, it sucked. What the uh, fuck overall. was that? Yeah. Well, Stephanie did something like that uh, in Arena Mexico. Actually, uh, mm-hmm. it was a callback to something. It was like with Tessa Blanchard. Of all oh, people. right. They did. So they kind of called back to that. Uh, I don't think it was a shoot, to be honest with you. Uh, but I mean, who knows? Maybe it was. But if you want to see somebody totally checked out. Look at Julia, at, like when she walked out of the ring, and, and Nakano walked up to her. It was like I can't wait to leave this place. Yeah. Um, so I don't think she's putting in her best effort, to, to be honest. I don't think she has in a long time. I don't think last year was a good year for Julia overall, unfortunately. And I hate that she's gone out this way because I remember at the end of 2022, they're like this is the biggest star in, in, in wrestling. Sure, like you sure. could argue, and now she's just like leaving with now- a whimper. And now we have a show coming up at the end of April called All Star Grand Queendom in Yokohama Buntai, Dylan. And um, what's going to be the main match for that? Oh yeah, I'm kind of bringing around my point. Mm, sorry. Yeah, you had the Julia Tom match. Compare the Cinderella final to the main event with the red belt. Yeah. Definitely. This crowd cared so much more about the Cinderella match. Then Micah and Utami, it was mm-hmm. ridiculous. <laughs> like, uh, like Ami Saray of all people getting his <laughs> pops uh, here, and Hanan, the fans really bought in. Again, I don't. Yes. I wouldn't have done this. I would rather Azumi or Starlight be the one to get this personally, just for you know. I think they're more ready. But this worked. Like for for they, now, they, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like this Hanan thing really worked. It did great. Uh, so you have to give her credit. Ami Saray, always over hated on in my opinion. Uh, like Ami Saray, she's a good. I really liked her when she first came in. She's another one. Last year was a victim of poor booking, in, in my opinion, more than anything wrong with her. But to come here, uh, I did think Ozumi should have been the challenger. But the fact of the matter is this: the fans rallied behind this match, and they did great. And the main event was not over at all. Uh, and like it was a thirty-minute, not mm. interesting match. It was so opinion. slow. I, Utami might be another one that might not have wanted to yeah. go full full out. Guess it's a so. shame. I feel so bad for Micah 
uh, her title reign has been so overshadowed by all of this backstage stuff. She doesn't feel like you were talking about. They put so much behind her, but to me, she doesn't feel like the the champion you want. But they at try, the you know. You know, they they try to put most effort behind her. I mean, like I said, they are giving her these big entrances. They're giving her the big matches. They're giving her the main events. But absolutely, that like yeah. she is, yeah, she's just caught in this entire chaos that went on backstage. That's right, yeah. And I've always loved her as a wrestler. You know, I thought she was kind of underrated for a long time. Uh, they made the decision to put the red belt on her, which I, I, it was tough when I wa- I think we talked about that, uh, that stardom, the end of the year show where it was Micah and Suzu. Yep. yep. And but I imagine, just thought, yeah. yeah. Imagine right now that Zuzu would be the champion. It wouldn't be better either. No, and I was literally about to say that exact thing. Like, <laughs> okay. When I watched that match, <laughs> neither of these two felt like main eventers to me uh, at all. Like, and I still don't think that. Like, I, I don't think either one of those are main eventers at the moment. Yeah, then, but <laughs> those who are left, they, some of them have to be main eventers. I think Tom will get the belt back re- real soon. Mm. Like said, uh, overall, like, I think this that's where this is all probably building to. I think the ultimate end game of stardom and the red belt, when they really want to take the big jump forward, is when they do what they wanted to do last year and have uh, Kamatani <laughs> and get the, the red belt. I think that's when we're going to see things play out how they want uh, overall. But Micah's doing her best. Lover as a worker. Like you said, they are, they're not like, it's not like they're doing anything wrong with her. It's just the timing of it mm. all. And I do think that you want, there's a little something that I don't think she has right now, like to be the top star. Like she's a great worker, but I don't see her as a top star. Like, you know, the like Ju- when Julia won the belt or when Shuri was champion, I don't think she has what they had, or, or Utami the first run. I think that they were p- forced into a terrible position with so many injuries. Mm. And and that's another thing that hurt this whole thing. We know that match wasn't supposed to happen. She never beat Nakano for the title. And that's the thing, you know, with um, when Julia won the title from Shuri, it was the end of a very long and very well-built storyline. And this one here... It basically fell into place because other opportunities or other possible solutions were just injured. Yeah, they just had to throw it together. It was, you know, and, but I, I applaud her. She's a good worker. Yeah, none of this is her fault. It's just a tough situation, and I do think they're probably going to need to pivot uh, pretty soon. Uh, Hanan, uh, you know, the way that the the tournament worked, she challenged Ano uh, for mm-hmm. the white belt. I don't think she'll win, to be honest with you. <sighs> no. But, I mean, they had her win the tournament. So, so. But given given that that Anno signed, I think she'll, exactly. she'll be positioned strongly. Yeah. Mm. As she should be. She's she's one sure. of the... She has a star power and an aura. She has an aura, yeah. She yeah, does. yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, she's somebody that you'll probably see a lot more of <laughs> anyway. And to be honest with you, I think she was going to sign either way, regardless of this Rossi stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, to be honest, I think that you can't you can't just have her around and then just like, no, we don't want her. <laughs> like, you know, like, like no. That brings brings me back to my question that I had here: What's going to be the main event for All Star Grand Queendom? My guess would be Mike uh, Nakano. Mm-hmm. But it's not like they they've set anything up. I mean, they no, got this this the thing. They, thing. <laughs> Yeah, I right. Mean, Momo. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, like Momo and Micah, they're going to have their match, but Momo is like, nobody. What? <laughs> it's not like, going to be a match uh, for, for that just, building. No, no, not, not at all. And, and Momo was great years ago. I mm-hmm. don't think she's very good in, in, anymore with, with a way to tie. But oh. uh, this is an interesting storyline. I said, I think if you had a stronger baby face, you could make something out of this, uh, like a lot more. Like when Momo and Azumi had their feud, it worked really well, even in short matches. I think Red Belt versus a champion that's kind of not a blow away success. I don't want to say she's failing because I don't think that, but it's not a blow away success. I think we can all agree on, on that right now. I think this is not the kind of match for for that or anything. So I would presume that Micah beats Momo, and then Nakano will challenge her after. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, turmoil-heavy part of this show, turmoil-heavy months for stardom. Um, we'll see how that all goes on and who will eventually be the main event 
talent. Um, but when you said it about the white belt, I would actually think that with these five gone, they would need Arno in a more prominent role. So <sighs> putting the white belt on Haaland seems very early. But then again, you've given her this, this tournament victory right now, and Arno should be needed in other positions. So maybe they'll yeah. pull an upset there. I think they're going to go really heavy with Cosmic Angels. The way they built up to Poise return, Nakano, they loved so much and pushed her so hard last year. Arno, the white belt champion. Like, you could tell Cosmic Angels is like what they, that's their, like what they want in starter right now. Uh, and I think those all of those people will get big pushes. I can see Poi being another one that could be a threat uh, yes, to to get sure. a big po- push. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, she's a great talent. Again, I, I no no shade thrown at all. Uh, Poi is a great talent. Uh, you know, and very charismatic. Such an insane character in a lot of ways, but in a good way. Obviously, you love what they're doing um, with, with with Ano. Uh, Micah's faction, I, I like the group that they they fit around her as well. I think they've done a pretty decent little job here um, with uh, EXV. Uh, you know, because you built up her and Mina, and like Mina was kind of doing the Club Venus thing. It wasn't really working. Uh, so they put them together. Hanako, a great young talent, uh, power rookie. Uh, you know, so they've got a nice little crew around her. Now that yeah. I think about it, hasn't hasn't um, Micah also called out Megan Bain? Yeah, are, didn't they say they were going to do that show in America? I think, that oh match? yeah, that, may, that makes sense, yes. I think, I don't know. Uh, like I said, you know. Uh, but I do think that, uh, either way, Megan, and they obviously have a storyline with Megan Man as well, uh, with Micah, that you would want to go with uh, as well. Yes. Uh, so yes. we'll see. We'll see overall. And they did accept it. So, yeah, they're going to have their match in uh, WrestleMania weekend, Megan Bain and Mike. Yeah, just looking at it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, Mo- Momo, would they really put that in the main event of the, the All Star? I mean, how far did they fall? Like, that's like so far in one year. Remember last year, the show they had? Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be like that again, this, <laughs> this go around. Nope. Yeah, interesting times for a stardom. Um, Bushy Road definitely has a call in what happened in the last couple of months, and it shows with uh, the departures and the state of the company right now. And um, they have to build up new talent, and we'll be watching closely what they do this year. Okay. And uh, very comparable to that, actually, Dylan, is New Japan Pro Wrestling, the other company. Uh, absolutely. Under yeah. the Bushy Road banner, they also have to build up new stars. Last time, uh, the last couple of sh- shows, we discussed uh, Katsuchi Kokada leaving. He now, very awkwardly, Okada won this part of this modern Amer- North American Triple Crown that also had a New Japan title, but of course he didn't win the New Japan title. It's it's all a mess with this uh, Triple Crown they had in AEW. Awesome. Uh, but over in New Japan Pro Wrestling, we had Yotatsuji win the New Japan Cup. In the main event against Hiroki Goto, Hiroki Goto was probably not uh, the one that was supposed to be in the main event with David Finlay getting injured. Lots of people thought that Finlay would make the finals. For my liking, this final was much, much more interesting, even though, of course, you knew that Hiroki Goto was not winning the match. Goto put so much effort and heart into this match that... I want to use your phrase too, God bless him, David Finlay, but Finlay would, would just not have been able to produce the match that Goto was able to have with Tsuji to draw you in. And that's the thing. You knew that Goto was not going to win this match. But deep down, there is this, this belief, this yearning for a Goto fan to have Goto win these matches. And so, he was able to draw me in for some of those near falls in the end of the of the match. And that also goes to Yoda Tsuji to work the match in a way that you think there could be an upset, even though you know realistically there is no chance for Goto winning. So the match overall, it was, I would say, a good New Japan-style main event that um, goes along with the style that we've seen in recent 
In recent months and years, and Yoda Tsuji probably was the best guy in the tournament, uh, running Rampage over uh, many, many guys in this tournament. Um, notably, of course, this, this great finish that he had with El Phantasmo, with his curb stomp from the top rope. That looked great. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Yoda Tsuji now, he is the winner of the New Japan Cup 2024. Dylan, first, what did you think about the winner and the match in the final? And then, what was your overall take as someone who watched all of the matches <laughs> of this tournament? <laughs> yeah, what of the fools who <laughs> watched this tournament? Um How can you say that Goto wasn't supposed to be here? Look at this huge run he had with the two wins he got <laughs> to get to the mid The final. great stuff about that is that in the video building up to the final, they mentioned David Finlay as one of the wrestlers he beat, even though he did not. I mean, it, it, he won by forfeit. So, <laughs> listen, when you take wins, how you can get them <laughs> when you're Goto. Um, the match was great. Uh, definitely the best match of the tournament. Goto being a great worker is not a surprise to, to me at all. I had expectations that this would be a great match. And it worked out. It really did. It brought the best out of Suji. And I think that with the match, I actually thought it was possible Goto would win. Not because of Goto, but just because they wouldn't want Suji to face uh, Naito. And a lot of people are speculating about Moxley and, and the things they're doing oh, there. Oh, yeah. No, but I wouldn't I th rule it out. I wouldn't rule it out. I'm no, I wouldn't that. rule it out at all. And I and I kind of wanted Suji not to win because of that reason. In my opinion, Suji's first title shot should have been at the Dome. Like, if you look at him throughout the tournament, he is clearly the guy. <laughs> like, it's 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 so obvious that he has the aura that you need. Uh, his wrestling is just getting better and better. He had a fantastic bounce back after the terrible hair versus hair match they had, uh, him and Waimura, and we could see who was at fault for that in, in hindsight, uh, ultimately. And it wasn't him. Like, you look at his run in this tournament. Quick he was getting detour, the best. Quick detour on Yuya Uomura. Man, he looks so much just like a guy right no now. No aura at yeah, all. No aura at all. Man. Yeah, That's he's going nowhere. Uh, like, uh, you know, overall. like, uh, And I think all of them... I mean, you know, it's tough <laughs> like, overall for them. But Suji was the one shining light of an otherwise awful run, I would say, overall. I mean, you're, like, struggling to find good matches outside of the stuff he did, <laughs> I would say. Uh, I yeah, guess you could say... The yeah. Zack Sabre Jr. versus Ren Narita match actually was good for the part when they did wrestling. Yeah, of I course, thought that match sucked. Is... But, uh, oh, like, wow. you know, like, I don't think Narita's very good, actually, as, as a wrestler. Like, I, I've kind of turned a corner in a negative way. I think he's lost. I kind of like Sho when he joined House of Torture. I mean, sure. Like, yeah. You know, I, I, I don't think he's very good, actually. Uh, like, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I thought Yoshiashi Sonata had a really good main event. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, I kind of liked it because they called back to their old feud they had. I mentioned it on the Patreon. <laughs> One of my favorite New Japan moments is when Yoshiashi first pinned Sonata in the tag match, and you had Goto rush in and hug him afterwards. And it was such a real moment. Uh, but obviously, you knew Sonata was going to win that. I was surprised, actually, that Sonata beat Jungle Boy. I figured that they would want to have him pushed more and him to get his win back from when he lost before, but Sonata actually won it. It made the match a lot better with him and Goto, mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. Sonata had a nice little run uh, in the tournament uh, overall. Outside of that, I mean, it goes to show you. Yeah, there yeah. really is nothing, man. It's... And, and I think back to our conversation last episode, and, you know, like four, four weeks ago now, <laughs> when, we, when we went up the roster. This roster is bad. Like, this is not a talented roster in any way. Like, the, in terms of star power, wrestling, <laughs> this is a poor roster up and down. And they deserve blame as much. It's easy to point the finger at Gato. But mm -hmm. then you see the wrestling that we, we've been presented with in this company. This is not a good company in the ring right now. And hopefully Suji is a guy. And, and obviously pushing guys like Goto will, will help that uh, if, if that happens. But they, I said it on Twitter and Dr. Jonathan as well. They desperately need a veteran like Goto in a position where he can have title matches with younger talent to elevate them, much like he did with Yuratsuji right here. But they chose to, gave, to give two of their belts away 
to foreigners. And to foreigners that haven't even been part of their company at all, that are new to the company. And th we said it last time, that's not something that they need right now. They need talent that the crowd can attach to that have been there and that have been pushed organically. But instead, they put on two belts on uh, on Matt Riddle and and um, what's uh, what's his name? Uh, Z uh, Nick Nemeth. Nick Nemeth, right. I was just going to say Dolph Ziggler, but of course it's Nick Nemeth. Uh, of but, course, the but, never title and the never title. <laughs> yes, the three never titles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the triple crown of never they have there. Uh, they the belts these, are worthless. Yes, they put these titles. But Goto, Goto wearing a belt would elevate a belt like the, the, the global title just because he is so great at it. And They just won the uh, Never Open Weight Six-Man Tag Team title, obviously, because Yoshihashi, Goto, and Tomoyurishi is the best trio they have. And uh, Goto in the main event position or in a, in a semi-main event position would be still very valuable to the company because he could lead this talent to good matches and could get them over with the crowd because he knows how to do it. But no, they, they instead went with uh, other ideas. And these other ideas, and you said it, the wrestling in this company right now is not good. And there, there is few highlights, really. And, yeah. And then we can talk about the House of Torture run in this tournament, Dylan. And we said it on the last show, we, the last show I named Ghetto 101, because it's the thing that Ghetto <laughs> knows. This, the, the yeah. thing that Ghetto knows how to, how to book is this stuff right now. And given that the company is where it is right now and where the, and the wrestling is where it is and it, it clearly has a ceiling and you, you see that in this tournament. I can't really blame Ghetto for doing what he did in this tournament because A, that's what he knows and B, this house of torture stick is a way to throw smoke and mirrors over the non-existent high-level New Japan matches that, that we could get presented that we yep. had years prior. Yeah, I made, I made a similar point on, on the Patreon. Like, this stuff sucks, don't get me wrong, but if they try to go out and use their roster and to have the best matches possible, it would still not be very high-level, ultimately. So they're trying to do something completely different It's kind of I an excuse in that way. I don't think it's actually working at all. Uh, no, these, no, no, it's these, not. <laughs> and, and even like for all of the talk of them being this heat machine, so many run-ins happen to no reaction in, in their matches, uh, like one after the other of people running out to, to not a lot of crowd heat, ultimately, which is very interesting. Uh, unlike Suji's win, which got a huge pop <laughs> at, at the end. Uh, Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Suddenly, that crowd in that final, by the way, they were like buzzing behind Goto uh, in there, e even against Suji. I was uh, very interesting how that worked. I gotta, gotta say one one more thing that really is taking a lot of excitement for me from this tournament is the venues that they used. Oh yeah, that's a great point. Totally agree. <laughs> that, that, that. These uh, these industry halls. They just look so awful for pro wrestling, man. Aura Nagaoka is a venue they use a lot, and it's just so hard to get to get real crowd reactions in these yeah. big, big venues. The ceiling, the, the actual ceiling I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. right now, the, ce the ceiling is so high that a lot of the a lot of the cheers and boos they just get caught up with with the with these big buildings and. They should use some proper buildings that are good for pro wrestling, like for example, like uh, Nagoya International Conference Hall. That's a great pro wrestling building, for example. Yeah, yeah, I, I did like too how this kind of continued the trend from last year uh, in the tournaments, where a lot of these mid tour shows weren't mm. great numbers, and they did a nifty number at the end, like for the final. Yes, it was still down from like last year's final. But like do almost double of what happened at the end of like the year when they came to Ara and Nagoka. Mm -hmm. So it's like <laughs> the fans will show up for the big <laughs> finals of, of these tournaments. It's just everything in between that they they don't want to come. I mean, in. look what they gave you. 
for example. Well, like, why would they? Great point. Yeah, obviously. They they went to this building in uh, Uwajima on March 12th, and they gave you Hiroki Goto versus Chase Owens in the main event, and David Finlay versus Tangaloa in the semi. Why would you come yeah. to these shows? I wonder what... It would have been interesting if Finley had made the final. Because uh, I think he... Or like, he could have won. I... Th- yeah? Hmm. That's you know, it, it makes sense. If you look at their booking, he lost the belt last month. So, yeah. of course, that means he has to lose up. See, <laughs> you've, you, you've picked up on my on my logic of New Japan tournament booking. Well, uh, not all tournaments, but uh, <laughs> New Japan, yes. G- Gato booking, <laughs> yes. It makes perfect sense. Uh, you have captured the mind of Gato 101. <laughs> Uh, which, by the way, when we when we released that episode, I got a DM right away that was like, as soon as I saw the title of the show, I knew it was going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that he definitely could have won. I, like I said, I think Goto winning wouldn't have been impossible if you look at the Naito being the champion versus Suji. What do you think about Suji right now? I think we can all agree he had a great run in yes. the tournament. The final was awesome, and he he has a swag about him that – separates him from a lot of these other guys. It like separates poor... him from the rest of the roster. Yeah, from basically the whole roster at this point. And that's the thing. When you were talking about Goto being the semi guy, I was like, when you really look at it, when we read those names off last month, we were talking, and it's kind of like, no, Goto shouldn't be up there. But actually, the way the roster is, he by default is actually one of yes. the top stars now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and like, you know, To me, he's a better option than Tanahashi. <laughs> like overall at this point. He is. Uh, I don't think that they could trust Tanahashi anymore um, as, as much as they painted. We, we, we've, we've seen this. Yeah, we've seen yeah. this with this injury now. That, yeah. Yeah, it, it pains me as well, but this is finally the time now. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is it. Like, he lasted a lot longer than everyone besides me uh, thought. <laughs> but even at this point, like, you have to see like what's going on. Uh, and I think Goto is one of the top stars of the company. Now, like, if you, if you were looking at the the hierarchy of New Japan right now. Who are the t- the top stars besides Naito? I think is like hands down the number one, and I think there's a large gap between him and everyone else. Yeah. But who would be like the next three of this four pillars of heaven right now with with the roster they have? Yeah. Um. Well, I think you could argue Suji is, is, is one of them. Suji <laughs> is yeah, definitely there. <sighs> Sonata? Sonata had a good... I liked his wrestling uh, during this tournament, but uh, as a star, him as champion, I think it's tough. That's tough, but I want to say he bounced back well from his title loss. Yeah, I agree. Bounced back well from losing to Naito again. I think... Yeah, that was really poor booking, but he made the best of it in this tournament. Exactly, and he he made the best of it, and I think even though the title run wasn't good, I think... He gained some momentum out of it. I thought some... the ending of it at the dome where he saved Naito. Exactly. Like that overwrote all of the bad stuff that came yes. before it because it was such a great moment. Yes. And he gained respect in the fans' eyes, I yes, think. Yes, absolutely. So, even though he's not main event level material, he is a bit higher than he was before he was champion last April. And higher well, that's... than. Most other people in the company yeah, exactly. right now. That makes yeah. them, yeah. Make yeah good point. Levels. Good point. You yeah. you won me over on that one. Like, yeah, I agree with you now. And then there would be evil. Yeah, he's kind of like their go-to guy. <laughs> he is. He is the the guy that they put in these positions whenever they want to put over someone like Yoratsuji. Yeah, he's kind of like the natural foil, uh, uh, almost. Uh, even mm-hmm. though, like, we've seen him when he gets pushed, the fans don't really, like, in terms of no, ticket sales, think, never yeah, <laughs> respond. It doesn't resonate in ticket sales, but it is... Something they like. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's the foil that they use, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so do you think that he'll beat Shingo uh, for the title? you think he'll retain the title? I think so, yes. I actually think, even though I don't... The and thing is, both... both yeah. uh, Outcomes are possible, but I think it evil... doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> like I think that's the problem with the belts too in New Japan is that none of these titles matter. <laughs> Actually, they're like, and that's the thing: evil and how the oh, great Okan the... has one. <laughs> yes, he, yeah, he, uh, he has the fourth ranked never title. Man, he's another guy. I mean, 
And, and I'm not even saying that I'm a fan of his, because I'm not. But you could, you had to. How is he lower ranked than Tango Loa on, <laughs> on your roster? <laughs> like what? <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those things that you just you can't do anything with this guy at all. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm here. Uh, but yeah, you know, evil definitely up there. Now Shingo was, was champion before. These are these, like I said, we're in tough times because they haven't. These are guys they haven't utilized all year, but now they're mm, thrust into they, these roles. They have to. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They have no choice. Not even Goto. Like I said, he would be up there now as, as one of the top guys. And I think Finley as well, when he comes back, uh, it will, will be one of the guys they yes. rely on. True, true. Uh, that, that they lean on. So, you know, they have some guys, but I mean, that's a rough lineup we're talking about in terms of star power at this point. Like I said, in an ideal world, Goto should not be a title contender. But the what, the world we live in, he's one of the best guys. Of course, that the one that with. we didn't talk about yet is Zack Zabel Jr. They were careful to put him out of the tournament. He lost to Renarita, obviously, but only due to shenanigans from uh, <laughs> from House of Torture, so they s somewhat saved him. Um, but for Sakura Genesis, that leaves him without really anything to do. Yeah, I don't think he's a star. Good wrestler, but I don't think they see him as a like a difference maker. I think they mm. see more of Finley like than him. As, as I think so too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, like if, what about Fantasmo? They gave him a little bit of a run. He lost to the eventual winner of the tournament. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and like one of the better. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the point. I think uh, Fantasmo has seen more of a star in from them than Zack Sabre Jr. has. Man, it's tough. I mean, how old is that? He's in his forties, right? No, Fantasmo. Oh no, that's Zach. Zach is thirty-six. Oh, okay. Oh, that's it's a little younger than I thought. Yep. Uh, no. Okay. That's interesting. Like I said, because he has there's a lot of good to him. Isn't Fantasma older? I think Fantasma really? is older than Zach. I think so. Wow. Yep. I, wow. I, Zach started so young too when he wrestled. Yeah, he well. did. Yeah. 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 Fantasma is uh, is yeah a year older than Zach. Yeah. That's really interesting. You and again, it's nothing against Fantasma. I thought he worked well against Suji. Uh, you just on paper you would think Zach would be a guy you want to push more, but. I don't know. They gave him a great run. Like he, I think he's. I'm not saying he's not meaningful to them. Like he had a great run with the TV title last year. That was a good mid card spot. But I just think when you talk about the cha like being the champion or like winning the title, I don't think they they see him that way. It would be cool yeah. if they, like now you could do a lot of interesting things with his character and style if they wanted to. But I don't think they want to though. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. But what do they want to do <laughs> with the title? <laughs> that would have been my <laughs> next yeah. question. Let's uh, yeah. let's look at the uh, card that we have coming up for Sakura Genesis, and maybe we can figure something out uh, what they are doing here. Yeah, like or that's, what they that's, want. A, that's the problem with New Japan. We can't think about what we think. We have to think about yeah, what, what they want. What they, they want. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, yeah, t everything would be different if <laughs> if it was up to us. But yes, we will try to figure it out, folks, out here. So. Um, for Sakura Genesis on April 6th, WrestleMania weekend, we have in the opener El Desperado and Ryusuke Taguchi against Zack Sabre Jr. and Kosei Fujita. Desperado would be one of those guys that I had in line for a push, Dylan. No. He's 40. That's true. Is it? Yeah. That's true, but he's popular. No. No. <laughs> no, he's, he's not getting a push. Another one Maybe would be Hiromo Takashi in the second match. Hiromo Takashi and Bushi against David Finlay and Ghetto. The thing is, Eddie Jr. Of is an automatic. That? Yeah, like Eddie Jr. heavyweight is automatic. No, like, yeah. like, yeah, like, I, like I, no, I, I know that. I know that. I'm just yeah. saying what I would. <laughs> oh well, yeah, like what we would want to again. <laughs> see, that's a totally different question. <laughs> what I like somebody like Desperado should be like doing much more than he's doing, but I don't think they think of him that way. And Hiromu, I don't know. <laughs> This is crazy. Like, Hiromu, it makes no sense what they're doing. They're just totally wasting him away. Right? Ridiculous, on, Ridiculous on their part. Absolutely. Especially, he has this match with Mustafa Ali, and that's what he's doing on the big show. Second match. Well, that shows you how little they, 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 they put, that little thought they put into that Hiromu and Ali match, mm. uh, ultimately. Zanada, Yuya Omura, and Doki take on Jeff Cobb, Great Okan, and Callum Newman. Callum Newman has been good recently. Some some good matches he had. 
And a heavyweight, which we disputed on the last episode. <laughs> Apparently so, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, again, in their eyes, anyway. <laughs> but these remnants of the United Empire, Dylan. Yeah. Who's, why, are, why are they still doing this? Well, we do have to take the L on, on Numa being a, a heavyweight. We both got it wrong. Yeah, yeah. But... That doesn't disprove your point that this group makes no sense anymore <laughs> without Os- Osprey. Uh, I mean, the, the thing is, remember Okan cut that really emotional promo uh, mm-hmm. after, and like backstage the, against the match he was not in because they didn't want him there. <laughs> That's but, told you a lot about uh, what they think. And then Okada just walked by him. <laughs> I think this company walked still, by Okan. <laughs> still the best meme of the year. Yeah, poor Okan, man. Like I said, I, I don't even think he's that good, but like, they're, why why do they hate him so much? I don't know, man. But uh, the, the group, though, and the, the thing is, though, you could argue every faction. Like, why is Chaos still, still well, a thing? That, that is a topic that we've passed by by years now. But even more so now that Okan is that gone. Okada's gone, yes. I, that's a great thing, too. Goto had a great promo leading into the, the final where he was talking mm-hmm. about, uh, first of all, his dad had passed away recently, yes. which was a very emotional thing. And then he made it like, he was like, I need to prove that joining Chaos was the right choice. <laughs> and I was like, that happened seven years ago. <laughs> and it wasn't even like, it was a choice that he made because it was... In terrible fashion. <laughs> yeah, it, exactly, yes. He made that because he was a loser. <laughs> so he figured, okay, yeah, I'm going, I'm going to be the the third ranked guy in chaos now. Yeah, it totally ruined him as like a main event level person, like that that whole deal. Yeah, uh, but I love how they brought that up. Like, <laughs> I need you to prove that it's the right <laughs> choice. What? <laughs> like that happened six years ago, six seven years ago, and now you need to prove that it's the right yes. choice. What? After, what? After six years, he he gets to evaluate his uh, his choices. Oh, also, we didn't even mention it. What did you think of the finish to that match with him going for the Rainmaker? I actually hadn't made up my mind about if I hated it or if I loved it. Um, I didn't like it, personally. Like, I thought it was such a, like... To me, here's how I read it. Maybe some people disagree, maybe mm. you disagree. This felt like a parting shot at, o- at Okada. Like... Okay, you're going for the Rainmaker, and he immediately turned it in. Like, if he had hit the Rainmaker, I think I would have liked it better as, like, a callback. And maybe he kicked out. But the way they did it, he basically immediately, like, it ruined the match. Like, him going for the Rainmaker screwed him over, uh, which I felt like a little last shot at uh, the Rainmaker himself. Uh, I, I thought it was yeah. really petty. It doesn't fit Goto anyway. No, no, not that. at all. Yeah, and that's why I said I think this felt like something they wanted. To, like you know, specifically in the match, more so than a Goto thing. Yep, I guess so. And, and that's why it felt petty to me. <laughs> like, like why, why are we doing this? And it didn't make any sense for the match, really. Um, no, and, but, and that tells you that they probably told him, "Yeah, yeah, do that." Yeah, like this, we got this idea, and I mean, yeah. it, it, a lot of people talked about it. It kind of worked in that way, but I just, I, I felt like it was a petty shot at Okada, who they're clearly not very happy <laughs> with how things played out <laughs> uh, ultimately. But uh, yeah, we. Chaos, the groups, every faction in New Japan needs to blow up, and, and just, <laughs> everything needs to change. Except there's the more. Here. There's more. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Title Three Way Match: The War Dogs, Clark Connors, and Willa Maloney defend against Two Two, TJP, and Francesco Akira, and Kushida and Kevin Knight, who were on the video screen at the final show and said they were going to be the next challengers, which. Confused me because I thought that TJP and uh, Francesco Akira would be the challengers, but they're doing a three-way now, of course. It's uh, the junior tag title. That's what they do. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> I thought TJP was a heavyweight now. Yeah. What about that now? Yeah, what like, about that? <laughs> he, was, he was in the tournament, wasn't he? He was. He he faced Finley in the first round. Yeah, it, 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 decent match. Like, uh, no, not, not a bad. He lost, and then he's yeah. back to and challenging he, for the junior yeah. title now. What? What was the point of this <laughs> heavyweight run? Uh, you're, I mean, if you can call it a run, the fastest return to junior division ever. <laughs> yes. uh, Quicker than a Koto game. 
Oh yeah, Cody Gay lasted for a couple of years, and now, oh, now yeah, he's back yeah. as, as, as a heavyweight. So yeah. maybe maybe one day that should be TJ's gimmick. Now, <laughs> like every year, he has like a one week run as, as a heavyweight and bounces back. But uh, let's see Kevin Knight back. They said that he didn't resign, um, and now he's he's back doing his thing in a team that's probably not going anywhere. No, <laughs> no. Uh, but Kushida. for all I know, I would just say TJP and Akira just win the titles back. I mean, they're the best, like, as a team, they're the best team of the, of yeah. the three. Like, <laughs> and they have the story that Akira f- overcame his fears in this cage match, which yep, uh, the put, guys him, on the cage put match. him over, exactly, so that would make sense. The group, like you said, the group as a pro- whole has a lot of issues, just logically, at this mm-hmm. point. But, I mean, the cage match was still great, and uh, he he was one of the main benefactors of it as well. So, yeah, I'd go for it. I mean... The War Dogs, I mean, it's tough right now with them, with Coughlin retiring. Mm, um, very sad, you know, yeah. Yeah, that was a very sad situation. I, I hope the best for that guy. You know, I really hope he's doing all right uh, overall. And, and, and all of the War Dogs took a hit uh, from it. I mean, Finley had the, the thing, like, you know, derailed whatever was going on in the cup. Yep. So that group is kind of like flailing around right now. They might want to keep the titles on them just to give them something. But ultimately, I don't think the belts matter that much, uh, sadly. Mm. But I can see, I, I, if I were to make a prediction, I think I'll say the War Dogs would retain. Just to, just to give the group something, because they're in a, a tough spot right now. Mm. Yeah, well, why not? <laughs> it's, it's exactly, that's the, that's, that's, the truth. why not? Yeah. yeah. What's next? Oh, more Bullet Club, of course. Uh, hey. IWGP Tag Team title. Kenta and Chase Owens defend against Bishamo and Hiroki Goto and Yoshi Hashi, Dylan. Think about this. If you're Gato, we talked about House of Torture. And we we both, we're, I wouldn't say we're fans of that style or House of Torture, mm-hmm. but we both justified their push exactly. uh, a, a segment ago. What upside do you think they see in Chase and Kenta as, as tag champions? What possible reason could, do, well, do they see? I, Can we justify this? <laughs> says Trigger. Isn't like Yoshihashi trying to challenge Kenta for the Defy title or something like that? Defy title buildup is where the, the tag titles are? That's the justification for this title run. I have no oh. idea. Man. Hopefully, Bishop just wins. Like, it's not like you. The thing is, they're a great team, but the division is hopeless at, at this mm-hmm. point. Uh, but they can at least have b- good matches. And Kenta and Chase, I don't think there's literally. I think there's literally zero upside with them at all. I don't think beating them means anything. The matches aren't going to be good. What What's the point? Uh, other than just a gold watch. Like, you know, like, these guys are, have been here. Chase is one of their soldiers, so give him a title again. But they did that already with Fale. Like, how many times do you need to reward people in this company? I don't know. I'm actually confused on what Hikoleo and El Fantasmo are doing on that. Are they are they in America for WrestleMania weekend? Could be. No, yeah, may, maybe so. Maybe I wonder so. when the, the plugs are going to get pulled on that Hikoleo push. <laughs> Yeah, man, he lost. It's only a matter of time. time already. <laughs> yeah, it's only a matter of time. If we're, if we're being honest, and uh, this thing with him and Loa, it's weird because their brother is not there I- anymore. Mm. Man, this card. Let's, let's say Bishop just wins the titles for my sanity's sake. Let's 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 just <laughs> go there. Yeah. Let's say that and hope that, but I want to say Dylan, Goto, and Yoshiashi are already the never tag champions, never six-man tag champs. Double champions, baby. Double champs. <laughs> yes. Well, and I'm glad because that their six-man team is freaking awesome. Oh, uh, that is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they're they're a great team to hold those belts, and I actually think the six-man titles actually mean more than the tag titles at this point. Oh, yeah, I can make the point. Yeah. I mean, it's sad to say, but I I think these tag titles are like below the earth in terms of value at the moment. Mm. What's yeah, next? Tough. Yeah, next up is the junior heavyweight title match. Show defense against Yo. Yeah. It is unquestionably a match. Clash. And the yeah. thing is, this story's been told like many times. Oh, oh, oh over. Mm. 
you know, yo, he's one of those guys that he's had intermittent spells of showing something like, mm-hmm. like flashes that he could be a dude in the junior division. It's another situation. Like all the title matches, the belt doesn't actually mean anything, <laughs> unfortunately. So I don't think it would like be that big of a deal overall. But for a junior division, it at least means something. I, I mean, I mean, at least they did tell some kind of a storyline with uh, Yo going after the House of Torture guys there and playing some shenanigans on them backstage. So that was at least a storyline. Um, that's more than we had for for some junior yeah. titles matches back. Back in uh, in the last couple of months and years, what, what so, about when Desperado said he wanted to show to join Strong Style? <laughs> that was high a story. Stakes. High stakes. Yeah. yeah. What are, What are the stakes of this match? I don't know if there are the any. Belt. Yeah, <laughs> the belt stands alone. Do you think Yo could win? How long has oh, uh, Show has only been junior champion for? For a short time now, right? Yeah, he just won in February. Yeah, I don't think mm, he's defended it. Yep. Yeah, and, and Yo stole the belt from him, actually. Great. Uh, everyone's mm. favorite. Mm. Yeah, you figure Sho will win. I figure Sho will win. And plus, they're leading into the best Super Juniors as well, so Great. I'm sure he will be. Maybe that'll be an excuse for him not to be in it. If he's the champion. Maybe. Would make sense if, for the House of Torture to just ruin everything. Yep. It's one of those things well they would save the tournament by not being in it actually right. actually so <laughs> I, will they be well, this is their baby face turn we're not wrestling in this tournament uh but no I mean I don't know it makes sense uh I'm not excited about it like if you if you're asking me like none of these matches are like oh I can't wait to see uh go Bishamon versus Kento Kenta in Chase mm-hmm. the next one the next one yeah. is interesting it's uh, John Moxley and Shoto Umino against Jack Perry and Renarita. What do you think about Jack Perry's run in New Japan? Atrocious. Absolutely. He might be one of the worst workers on the, on the roster right now. I, I don't know, man. He seems so checked out. I totally agree with that. And that's another thing. Because the thing is, he's become kind of a meme with all this punk stuff that happened at AEW. Yeah. Yeah. But if you remember... He was having good matches in the past. Uh, you he know, was. the thing with Luchasaurus, they had the cage match, the best match Luchasaurus ever dreamed to have. Uh, he was having big matches up and down. But right now, you look at him, mm. and this is a guy, like you said, I don't know what the deal is. There's all kinds of goofy rumors going on. Who right, knows? It's, it's it's funny how like, like it, there there's those rumors that he was trying to get out of the company and Tony Khan wouldn't let him and Tony Khan is angry at him for <laughs> costing him CM Punk. That's the rumors. <laughs> and the next day they announced this match where Tony Khan sends John Moxley to, to <laughs> Japan to hunt Jack Perry. Yeah, yeah, like he he hates him so much that he that he ripped the contract up live on TV. <laughs> like I'm, I'm sure that would happen <laughs> as well. Uh, but listen, he's gone rogue. This Jack Perry, he's, he's gone. What do you think about the goat? The mask that, that he wears coming out. The scapegoat thing. Do, do you just skip his entrances? I skip his entrances. And Good I move. Th- I still think it's very goofy. Uh, you haven't even seen it, and you know it sucks. <laughs> but it, I can it, imagine how it looks like. In my uh, head, I, I see the mask. Well, it's very bad. So, uh, yeah, his run has not been a success th- thus far. Why do they keep putting these guys over? Like, nobody knows. And nobody's these reacting to him. Yeah. Why would that, anyone? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, nobody knows who this is in, no. in Japan. Like, what, what are y'all doing? Like, what are you thinking right now in New, New Japan with this Jungle Boy push? I don't know, man. And we have the semi main of the, of the Sewer Hall show. It's Big Evil match. and Shingo Takagi for the Never title. Yes, this gets my blood pumping, Striga. That's what they introduced the global title for. That the never title is still <laughs> second from the top. Crazy company. Are you fired up about this? This cut sucks. <laughs> it does? <laughs> I mean, that's that's undeniably true with, with what you've said thus far. No one's arguing with this at all. Um but this yeah, is, this is all Naito pro wrestling because main event, of course, yes. Naito against Yorotsuji. They are putting all their chips behind a guy that is probably on his last big run. And, and guess then, what? There is a big gap. 
And, and guess what? This card's almost already sold out with Naito in the main event. So sure it is. <laughs> yeah, like that—that's what I kind of said. This is why I don't think they should take the title off of him to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> like right yeah, now, yeah. like I—I I think he should hold the title until Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> Get as much as you can. I squeeze mean, as much if, blood out of this turnip as you can. If they did a short Moxley run and Naito wins it back at Dominion, I think that would do good business for them. Maybe. I don't think... But then again, they can't... I mean, John Moxley can't beat Naito now because they've already announced the matches. Well, he's facing Naito, right, at the uh, the US show. Yeah, but that's April, April 2nd, isn't it? Oh. Oh, when is the show? Um, <laughs> See, now, now we're all confused. <laughs> Naito versus Moxley. Oh no, it's the week a week a week after that actually. I thought it was yeah. April two. It's April twelfth. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Okay, so yeah, but uh, still though, <laughs> my point stands. If Naito drops it yeah. to Moxley and wins it back at Dominion, they would have a strong main event that would sell out another show in June. I just think that Naito is so untouchable right now. Why, why have him lose? At, I, at this point, I agree. I agree. You, you know, like, I think he'll sell out. Any, like, I don't think, oh, Moxley's in the main event, so that'll make it sell out. I think it's going to sell out because Naito's there against whoever he faces, <laughs> regardless of Moxley's involvement. Uh, nothing against Moxley, who I'm a huge fan of, of course, mm-hmm. uh, at AEW. And, you know, on Wrestle Update, he was nominated for, like, Wrestler of the Year on our awards last year. Uh, so I think Moxley does a lot of great things. Uh, and I think the match could be very good. You know, Moxley's going to be motivated uh, going into it. I just like to me. I just wouldn't have Naito lose to anybody. Like, yep. Ultimately, I, I, if it were to... I agree with that. I agree with that. But if they do this match, I have a hard time imagining that AW agrees to this to be a one-time deal with the New Japan guy coming out on top. I agree with you. Like, yeah, in terms of what could actually happen, I could totally see that. And like you said at the start, Naito's on his last legs. Like anybody could see that if you watch him wrestle, uh, like they're they're getting everything they can out of him. But if he if he loses, like who's to say that you know that they would even go back to him uh, again? You know, like mm. that might be the end of the line for him maybe, at, at this maybe. spot, at least for a little while. Um, you know, he definitely could use some time off. I would say while watching his matches uh, the last couple of months, and we'll see overall. But here's the biggest problem with this, <laughs> and it kind of circles back to the New Japan Cup. Suji is now at a spot where he is the afterthought of all of this. Right. Why yeah. couldn't he just had Goto get this match? Yeah. Like, it would have been perfectly fine. Like, it saves Suji's big moment for the Dome, as I said, or at least a bigger show. But it's uh, what they always do. Yeah. They always do these matches that neither guy should lose. And it hurts them <laughs> at the end. It never works out in their no. favor. Uh, but it, it's tough because, like, you actually have a pretty interesting story with Suji and Naito. You know, obviously the faction mates going at it. Uh, that's something they both talked about before. That's Naito's kind of, the crux of his whole character is essentially that he wants the LIJ guys to surpass him uh, and go their own route. Uh, we saw that with Sonata in the, the, the Dome, obviously. Mm-hmm. You have a great story. You had Sonata get the title last year after winning the Cup in a, in a big upset over Okada. You could tease that again. But mm-hmm. now the way they've scheduled things out with this Moxley deal, it kind of pushes Suji back. And you know, do you know Suji is, Suji is losing because yeah. they've announced the title match with Moxley, and they never announce matches that they won't deliver. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And, and I think that really hurts Suji's and takes some steam off of his big win in the mm, cup. I think, I think so. it was a mistake having him win in, in hindsight if this is what they were going to do. Because I do think that you could build an aura. I think if they just had a normal match, people would buy into Suji winning that title. Like that they gave him a one-on-one match, no boxley. I think people would buy into that. That it's, it's possible that he would win. I think so too. But after all, this is a company of starts and stops, man. Look at David Finlay. Uh, yep. Yep. Absolutely. 
I, even my even my thought that he might win the tournament was like him failing up, <laughs> pretty much. It's just, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's not like he, they gave this guy a great push in here or, or anybody. Like, there's nobody they've given a great push to, <laughs> like or anything let's, like that. Let's talk about another guy now that we've been in the main event here and talked about that. Yeah, sure, told me no. What about him? <laughs> <laughs> what about him? I <laughs> yeah, lost in the first round of Jungle Boy. At the beginning of the tournament, I said said out a tweet. <laughs> That made someone create the Did Shota Omino Win account. And somebody did. And <laughs> they saw that. Yes. Yeah. You inspired the generations. <laughs> this, is, this is why you are a real time superstar. What is going on now? Oh, well, did that account's not very accurate. The, do you still remember the motorcycle entrance at Wrestle Kingdom and you thought, hey, this guy has something right now? Yeah, but he, he's always paired with someone he loses to on this, uh, on this roster. Uh, you could make the argument, and, and people have made that argument on Twitter as well. Oiwa in Pro Wrestling Noah is the best pushed New Japan youngster. <laughs> the thing is, for all we praise Suji's run in the tournament, and we talked about who the top guys are earlier and everything like that, they're missing, outside of Naito, I think he's he's the one person that's an exception to this, They're missing that star player that you could use to build these guys. With all due respect to Goto, who I love a lot, he is not at an Okada level. Like, if Suji had beaten Okada last year, or even an Osprey when they had their match, uh, if he had beaten one of those guys, it would have felt like a momentous win for one of these guys. Who is that now, that they could really get that big turning point win over somebody that changes their career? Because we've seen what the Goto win gets you, like a nothing title loss against Naito. Uh Who is that guy that you could build up to the title? Black. And that's the thing. Like, Suji, it's well, not I, like I he's... I want to quickly say yeah. I said that uh, that Chaos won the Never Six-Man title. Like, I just made that up. I I don't know where I read that or what I've seen, but the Taiwan shows haven't happened yet, so that that has not occurred. So if anyone was confused, I'm sorry. I believe you. <laughs> you said <laughs> See, I was... Oh. <laughs> was so convincing. Well, they're they're gonna win the tag titles. <laughs> they are going to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, regardless, though, like I said, Suji, it's not like they've had him. It's not like they buried him or anything like that, where he's lost to up and down the card. It's just he hasn't beat anybody. <laughs> like of, of note, it's like they've wrestled each other, the the young guys, and you know, then what? And he beat Goto just now. Like a a guy who formerly, like last year, was thought as the ultimate mid card guy. That's his biggest win so so far of his career. Like who is the big win that these guys could have? Their moment. I told Exactly that's exactly right. It's just a tough spot. And that's and I think that's their ultimate problem. Like if you just go down up and down win loss record who they faced, it's not like they've done bad by Suji. Except he hasn't gotten any real big wins that ma- that yeah. matter to his character, uh, pretty much. And now they have a chance, and Moxley's getting a shot, a shot right after. So uh, it's tough. And I, I think that this will be looked upon, it will be frowned upon at the end of the year, like this whole run, ultimately. I think they should have just waited. He should have been the G1 winner to me. And you could have built a whole show around his ascent to the top. And with Umino, he's the guy you would think would be like a more natural protagonist, so to speak, uh, of the company. Because uh, Suji's got that kind of vibe about him. Like he's not like a, a top babyface Tanahashi type of guy. He's no, got a little he bit has of a dark vibe. That, that's definitely true. And um, that is, I want to say that they sometimes make weird decisions with guys that they don't push. But this one, I mean, of course, it's obvious that Suji is the guy. But we've seen crazier yeah. things in wrestling where promotions were presented the guy and didn't go with him. But they are going with Suji at least f- with this push that they are giving him. Yeah, and I, I don't yeah. agree. I, like, I think that they're not going with him. But, like, that's why but, wrestling is so weird. That yeah, but, but this given, is actually given what they think what given what they think what the push is, they are pushing. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they're but they're, what they think a push is is not an actual push to the fans, unfortunately. Um, so we, we'll we'll again they, the. The, f- the final thing is here about New Japan Pro Wrestling, they have to hope that a guy with two shot knees and paralysis. muscle paralysis in his eye 
can keep up the schedule. That's their only hope that they have. He doesn't need to be putting over Moxley. Like he needs to put over one of these guys. That's true. <laughs> like you know, and how can they not see that? What's something that seems so obvious? But it's New Japan, so it is New Japan. I think it's tough. Like that tournament. My whole thought on that was like this company is. I titled the video on YouTube of the last episode uh, "New Japan's Lost Its Way" and on Cage Match as well. Mm. This felt like a. It's not just lost its way. It felt like this is a sinking ship most of the, the time of this tournament. Suji's win gave us some hope for the future. But I still think they – it may not be sinking, but it's still off course drastically. I would say like how they're, they're doing it right now with, with Suji and Moxley and all of this. And maybe it will all work out. Maybe they it will turn around you know, and something crazy will happen. But You know what cursed them? They Okada were cursed. Not leaving. <laughs> well, yes, in the short run, that's what they cursed them. But yeah. the, the real curse, Dylan, is the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't even bring that up. Yoda Tsuji, yeah. he wants to separate the world title, retire the IC title, and carry on the lineage of the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Why is Naito doing that? Wouldn't that be Naito's deal to do that? Given his character and given his past, he never liked the unified titles. He never liked the IC title either, though. No. He doesn't want that back. He liked the IWGB title. He's hating the IC title so much, he's fighting to keep it away. <laughs> <laughs> but he could retire it, too. If he, I mean, he could just say, ah, we're going back to the IWGB heavyweight title. And the IC I'm title sh- is done. I'm shocked at how many people care about this, this belt deal. <laughs> Like, this happened three years ago. <laughs> like, w- when is it time to move on? <laughs> well, apparently it's not time. And they keep bringing it up. Like, so if you want if you want to bring the belt back, bring it back. Bring it back, yes. Do <laughs> yeah, it. No, no, nobody's stopping you. No. And if you, do, if you don't want to bring it back, then don't bring it back. That's fine. It's not like but anybody what, would care if they would just get rid of the world title. I'm, I, like I said, I think maybe it's just me. But I don't care about this belt design one way or the other, personally. Like, like you know, it's like none of them have any meaning with, with me or resonance with me. I know a lot of people, when they got into New Japan, they loved the old belt. And that's what they associate with the best times, with the Tanahashi no Kata and all that. Yeah. but And that's the association what, that people have with the, with the good times of New Japan Pro Wrestling that, that is associated with the IWGP Heavyweight title. And the IWGP World Heavyweight title has... It's associated with bullcrap. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. Like, if the title had looked different, we still would have had all of the Tanahashi and Okada matches. It was because of those great moments that they were great, not because the title looked that's how right. it did. But no, so, it's not about the design of the title. It's about the championship itself. And I, like I said, I know a lot of people care about this, so I know I'm kind of on an island a, a little bit. But I just... Why bring it? Like, why does it matter? Like, book better shows. Like, that's what I care about. Have great moments that we can all talk about now. Yeah, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be talking about titles. That's that's correct. <laughs> no, we can talk about it because they talk. About it. <laughs> like, so they, <laughs> if they didn't bring it up, we wouldn't be talking about it. But if you're gonna smash the title, do what do what Finley did. Grab the hammer, smash the damn thing <laughs> into pieces, and we'll talk about it on this next episode and how stupid it looks. <laughs> and and maybe well, here's what they should do. Get rid of this title and create a new IWGP world title. Oh, no. To, to bring in. We need another belt. Another that, lineage. Yes, exactly. A new lineage. They are scrapping. This new belt is not associated with any prior title. It's a completely fresh start. And I think that would be the best option. Four belts is what New Japan has always yes, needed. Yes, that, that, that is definitely the thing that they would they should do. Never title number four. <laughs> the, the new, new improved never title. Yeah. <laughs> What's with this company? Let's, let's move on, Dylan. Uh, let's go to All Japan Pro Wrestling final topic of this show. They have Ottawa Watch coming up. It's going to be the final show in Ottawa Watch for this year because they, of the uh, construction measures. March 30. We have a whole card in the Opener, we have uh, Actress Time with Mirai Aono and 
Ayano Irie against Koki and Kalamik. Then we are going to the actual All Japan card. Kasayashi is coming in. Oh, okay. Team with Seki Yoshioka and Fuminori Abe against Naruki Doi, Seiko Tachibana and Ryo Inoue. Cool six-man tag match. Kasayashi recently won the G-Infinity title over in Great with Shima. New tag champs there. Kasayashi is finishing up his career, so he's uh, making a stint here in his former promotion in All Japan. Makes a lot of sense. Legacy player in the junior division of, of All Japan. Yeah. Second match is Takao Mori and Osamu Nishimura against Kono and Toshiso Dylan. Yes. Back. Kono is back. Yeah, baby. It's what the fans needed. <laughs> we have a Road to Champion Carnival 8-man tag match. Kento Miyahara, Hokuto Omori, Kuroshi Tokyo Japan, and Rena Yabe team up against Yuma Oyagi, Shotaro Ashino, Ryukyu Honda, and Hartley Jackson. Shout out to Hartley for making it to the Champion Carnival. Big love to Hartley. A great guy. I, said, uh, I really loved uh, talking to him uh, when I interviewed him. And... Uh, so many great st- stories of the past of Zero One shenanigans <laughs> that we've had. And, hey, he's been doing stuff with Glade uh, for a while. Uh, they have the working relationship. Yeah, we'll talk about the carnival block he's in, but he, yes. he definitely fits in with the aesthetic. <laughs> he does. Done for. Yeah, he does. So uh, the next match on this card is for the All-Asia Tag Team title. <laughs> and an electric... Current Blast death match Atsushi Onita and Toy from DT, who won the titles, take on Hikaru Sato and Dentamura. Can we please finally rid Atsushi Onita of the All Asia Tag Team title? Please do. <laughs> Stringer, you know how we talked about at the start of the show, how like attendances are down and everything? <laughs> you read these cards to me. It's. And it's- it really clears the air of why that may be yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day. Man. Oh, that's the match. Um, you well, have it's nice for title. Toy to get a, to get a yeah, nice spot here, I guess. Nice Luke. spot on the card. The only DDT guy on the card. <laughs> By, only because he has is teamed with Onita. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> the other card. <laughs> For the junior heavyweight title, this is an actually a good match. Rising Hayato in his first defense against Musashi, who recently departed Michinoku Pro Wrestling and has come into All Japan. I just watched their tag match from the 20th, and they have some real good chemistry going. Yeah. Uh, Musashi put away Hayato very definitively in their prelude tag with his finisher, the Niten Ichiryu. And so, going to be interesting how they go with this title match. Obviously, it's Hayato's first defense, and she should defend the title. Dylan. Oh, absolutely. I thought it was cool that they gave him uh, the, the main event spot when he won the title, yep. even over the tag titles right? Uh, as well. Uh, they good, did that, over th- good that they did, because the tag team title match sucked. Well, look who's in it. <laughs> oh, Tokyo, all caps is yes, in there, yes. uh, which we'll talk about him a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, no, that was a good match. It wasn't like super spectacular. You don't have to rush out and watch it if you if you saw it. Uh, it like most of the time, it was not today. a good show. It was on the March 9 Kirk and Hall show. Uh, it was not a good show. No, no, not not at, not at all. Well, like you you're right about that. But the main event was the best match. It was decent yes. enough. Uh, and they gave him a lot of time, too, which a lot of Dan's matches weren't really happening uh, earlier on. Uh, but it was the right call to move it to Hayato. I think he's got a lot yeah. more upside as, as champion. Great charisma. Musashi's one of our favorites for years. Mm. Uh, you know, And it's great to see him on a bigger stage. And it's great to see him get this title match. I think that that match is going to rock uh, and really going to impress the people. If you're not familiar with Musashi, you know, I think that this match, Hayato's on a real hot streak right now. It seems like they're really behind him. Again, yeah. very charismatic guy, great worker, great style to him. This is going to be a banger. I, I, yes. I really have high expectations for it. Something um, that I can't have high expectations, given the last tag team title match, is Zuwama and Hideki Suzuki defending the world tag team title against Jun Saito and Rei Saito with Commander Taru, Dylan. That's what it says uh. on the All Japan website here. It's commander or general. What do you like more, commander or general? Not that employed. Sounds <laughs> Not employed. Taru. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is the best version of Taru. Um, yeah, I, I hate 
Suwama and Hideki as a team. Like, I the think the finish a of the tag title match on the March 9 show was so awful, so goddamn awful, they pinned both Kuroshio and Ashino and made them look like so big fools. And well, like I said, for Jiro, it's okay. But not, yeah, but for not Ashino, yeah. Well, it shows you where he's at. Uh, the the mm-hmm. pecking order, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Jiro is just a so, curse upon this company. Oh, yeah. But so the, the thing is, forget about them. Like, Suwama and Hideki suck as a team. Yeah. It wasn't just the finish. The start of the match was was terrible. Uh, this storyline they have, <laughs> why? What good is this doing? They had the singles match. Uh, and it's it's what? getting even worse with, uh, with Suwama. He... At the press conference before they, that they did this week for this show, Zuwama always took shots at Katsuka Nakajima as champion. Yeah, that's while, the match they're building to. Yeah, that's the match they're building to, while also saying that he's concentrating on the tag team title right now. <laughs> <laughs> Decide what you want to do. Oh, yeah, that's the match that they're building when to. You're Su- when you're Suwama, you are involved in everything, every so, title. Yeah. I would assume that Commander in Chief Taro will be responsible for a title change here. Um, and what a it's it sucks it's things happen. The title back. It sucks things happen how they did with Ray's injury by yes. forcing this title because they were on a good run. I think they were at the point where beating them actually would have meant something, and then it got kind of derailed for the Sadeki Suwama thing. I could totally see. I could totally see the title change. Yes. but I I don't have high expectations for this match at all. Nope, me neither. I'm so happy that they're going to go on a singles run. Like this, Hideki has been such a waste, like worst run of his career, in, in my opinion. I was so happy to see that WXW announced him and Tim Thatcher for the upcoming tag league in October. That's going to rock. And they're both kind of in similar situations. They're doing the worst work of their career because <laughs> yeah, they're in these lame it's... tag teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they were with each other in both companies, they would be awesome. <laughs> and uh, remember, they had that very brief run as like champions, Noah, it was as awesome. a team. And it was awesome, exactly. So uh, why are we doing uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I hate this team so much. Yeah. Sido Brothers, back with the tag team title makes sense, at least. But... Yeah, it does. It's the worst possible thing that they have now because they went back to the Voodoo Murders deal. Yeah. And it's funny, uh, Michelle pointed that out to me. Um, the Cider Brothers, they are kind of doing a police deal. They also recently were uh, like ch- police chief for this police station in Tokyo for for one day, while at the same time associating with Taru and the Voodoo Murders. Well, this is like a reformation, I guess. Mm. Like trying to, to rehabilitate Taru. Oh, is it? I I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I, I guess doesn't... we'll have to see in this match if, if if he is going to be a valuable member of society again, or maybe not. But when they're like all ultra baby faces. <laughs> 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 Voodoo Murders has changed their style. Oh, like yeah. total clean cut. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I loved what they were doing on their own. Yep, I, I, I have no use for Voodoo Murders. No. Saitos. No. And then with the, we have the main event. Katsui Nakajima makes his uh, fifth defense against Yuma Anzai. And yeah, I guess so. Pretty c- close to the champion carnival. And given that they are building up the Zuwama and Nakajima match, there is no chance for Yuma Anzai to win the match. But it's another main event for him. It's another challenge for him, and it's another opportunity for him to uh, learn and to show that he is the next guy. I mean, the the match should be great. But the way it all played out, the booking of it, I didn't like at the start. But for the reasons I feared, we're heading towards where we're heading, (laughs) pretty much, with Suwama being the more focused option instead of Anzai. When, to me, Anzai should be the big deal. And on top of it, when you look at the tournament, he was really one of the few guys that you could make a case for that they could win. Yep. And now I think it's a lot harder to do that when he's just coming off of a title loss <laughs> like to, to Nakajima. So the match should be great, but I don't love the booking of it. That is it. Yeah. The card is not a great card. <laughs> 
the main event, like this is a one match show, yeah. or maybe two matches. Maybe Rising event. Hayato is yeah. going to be drawing in. Yeah. What do you think of, let me ask you this. Cause we kind of went through it. Mm-hmm. Have you watched any of these actress matches, like actress girls? I have Japan watched, matches? I've watched them, but it's not like <laughs> that I've paid a lot of attention, I gotta say. What do you think of the idea? Because we had heard about that this had been Fukuda's, like, it was like a halftime show in basketball was kind of his mm-hmm. idea. But actually, now, like, they're putting them on at the start of the show. Like, every yeah. time they're in, they're always the opener. I think they they dropped it after the first try, and they are not convinced that it's working. Otherwise, they would just try to make it work. So that's why they put them put them in this in this opening deals and... Um, it's 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 of course it's a self fulfilling prophecy. If you don't try yeah. it, it it won't won't get over. They were it was it was almost as if uh, Fukuda had taken a shot by the reactions from the crowd. Yeah, they are so afraid now what they what the other reaction would be if they put them on the main card or higher up on the card that they just I don't think they have the they don't want to do it anymore. I get the feeling this was something he really loved and was hyped about at first. I mean, we mm-hmm. saw it with the videos and all of that. Exactly. And and then when it actually happened, it it didn't work, and it was kind of like a gut punch to yeah. him. Yeah. And, I, and I think he's kind of overcompensated the other way about it. But it's not, you know, it's like what's the upside to it at the best of times? <laughs> Ultimately, if you look at their wrestling, it's not going to, like, capture the hearts of the audience, I don't think, mm. uh, either. Yeah. But I, I just thought it was interesting that, that they made such a big deal out of that and then, like you said, basically after one, maybe two showings, mm-hmm. it's you know, like it's it's they're doing it, they're yeah. going away from what they said, and, and now this, yeah, so, yeah, Not yeah. That's show. that's the card. Uh, wondering what's the attendance going to be for that because they also, Zuwama in the press conference said that Katsuri Nukajima is a unpopular champion. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, that's gimmick, gimmick and stuff, <laughs> but it, uh, yeah. <laughs> You know? This is Noah all over again <laughs> right now. <laughs> Remember when the Noah president was like, Kaito's got no fans here. <laughs> exactly, so... exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> Nakajima's not over. Like, nobody likes him. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're, we just put the title on him. <laughs> like, had him go over on a bunch of guys. But no. That's it's true. very interesting, him not being in the tournament. I mean, that's what these tournaments are for, aren't they? Or shouldn't they? Should be for. I mean, not usually. Like, I mean, I mean, usually yes, but usually the champion is also in the exactly. tournament. Exactly. Usually the champion is in the tournament, but ideally the champion shouldn't be because the winner should get the shot at the champion. I do agree, but I do think that, that, that there's great stories to tell of a champion winning the tournament at the same time. I think that's like a very easy story to, to tell if you sure. wanted. Sure. But um, Especially considering some of the people that are in the tournament, I think mm-hmm. he he actually could have been used uh, to, useful. Yeah, but what, what what do you think? Why that is? He's not popular. Like we could have just yeah. told us. Like he he's not a draw. Like we, no. we need to get real stars in there, like uh, Jiro, <laughs> like <laughs> the real big names. Uh, but no, I actually think I honestly think this run could be coming to an end. Like yeah, that's kind of what. This, yeah, I, I think they they might have run out of dates or something to that extent. And they don't want to use them in this tournament. And they're going to put him over, or put somebody, whoever wins this tournament over him. And that might be the end of the line for Nakajima in all Japan. Given that, I mean, given that, do you think there is a possibility Anzai wins? No, I think the one who wins the carnival will, will beat Nakajima. Mm. Will they call an audible on the day? If the crowd chants his name loud enough, like Misawa mm. over Jumbo in 1990. Maybe. Maybe. No, I don't Fuku- see it either. No, he's not. Anzai winning makes no sense at, at, at this point. But unless there's some kind of emergency, like Nakajima forces his way out. Like he's like, I demand I will never work for this show again after this. You have to take the title off. Me. It's, I, we've seen crazier things in wrestling. Maybe. I mean, like I said, anything's possible. Like, this whole situation's so weird like, yeah. and, and, and crazy that, you know, you can't completely write off anything. It just doesn't make logical sense. And why, why would Suwama be teasing this match if they're not going to do exactly, it? Exactly, yes, yes. And it is, it's real, we've, we've talked about that last show, or the last time we talked about All Japan Pro Wrestling, it's 
crazy how we got here from the hype Katsuko Nakajima had when he first came in to All Japan Pro Wrestling in November of last year, and it's been it's not yeah. even been half a year, or it's been half a year uh, almost. But uh, that's uh, time flies. Time flies by, and not to a positive ending, maybe. You know, it's not like all their houses have done good with yep. him. Like, there's no business detriment that he's had. There's a lot of weird rumors and stuff that's come about, mm. and his character is crazy. But in terms of actual effect on their shows, they've the show we talked about with the Genius of the Main wasn't a good show. Mm. But for the most part, All Japan has had good shows, yep. uh, you know, like good attendances. He's been a fine champion. He's done fine. I think that there are some issues with how they've used him and, and like, to have him go over so many people how they have and to not really capitalize on it in any way, you would ideally want him in the tournament to put over a uh, Yuma Yaki. Yeah. Like, uh, it, like so, somebody like that. Or uh, Anzai would be perfect. Beat Anzai here and then put him in the same block. Anzai gets his win back. Uh, like, you know, you could put him over those two guys, keep him out of the final, and you'd be fine. Uh, it makes so much not, sense to me. Him not being in the tournament is also a sign that he doesn't want to lose to a lot of people. I believe that as well, <laughs> to, to, to be honest. I mean, how many losses has he taken in, in all Japan? One. To a non all Japan guy. That tells yep. you a lot. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah. And I, I think that plays, honestly, that plays a big role in it as well. This is so awkward. This is so awkward. It's such a weird deal with him <laughs> being in this company. It should have been and, so much cooler. And with, it's working. His debut yeah. throwing flowers at... Miyahara and oh yeah, yeah. that was man. great. And the tag league final with Omori felt like yeah, a huge yeah. Like I mean, you said it, the, the houses are still good, but imagine how much cooler it could be. No, I mean I agree. I think if they had made some changes to how things went, uh, probably they should have never traveled the road of the Enochism stuff. In yeah, my opinion, big. I I a lot of people loved that, and I was one of the few that like didn't like it. And I definitely think that it's at best worn out its welcome now that we've had the lawsuit th- threats and all of sure. that stuff. Uh, I think they should have never even gone down that road in the first place. Because remember when he was in the tag league, it was all po- like reaction to him was all positive. Even when he beat Aoyagi, I was like the only one that thought that was bad. Like everyone else I saw was like very positive on his run. And he did great work in the tag league. But when they did the Inoki stuff, I didn't like it then. And I think it, kind of has hampered where things have gone the last few months. This rope that he's wearing with the X's on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was that was a punchline for one night. Yeah. You know, but it, they keep going back and back to it and he's wearing that all the time. It's just Yeah. And that was my problem with it from the very beginning. This feels like a gimmick. Like like this whole deal is like so gimmicky and comedy almost that he's doing this yeah. when he had such a very realistic and that's why i always said when we talked about it last year with kento and, and, and nakajima their match i thought the Noah one was a lot it was a lot better to me because it felt more real than the anoki based match right overall and, and we'll see where where it goes like i said this and i expect this anzai match to be a great match and i think it will draw all right i, I don't think it'll be like a blow away number no, but i think it'll be yeah yeah i expect a good number for them I think he would definitely have helped the carnival, you know, up and down the mid tier tour shows where you could put him in the main event. I think they'll be missing that when, when they go along and we'll have to see where it goes. But I do agree. It feels like the bloom is off the rose with him a, a lot in this triple crown run. It might be time anyway, just to, yes, to, to pivot. All right. Champion carnival, Dylan. Block A. Shotaro Ashino, Kento Miyahara, Yuma Aoyagi, Hokuto Omori, Renayabe, Kuroshio, Tokyo Japan, Davey Boysmith Jr. and Cyrus. What's your take on this? I wonder why they waited to announce like Ray and Davey. Like, was it like they waited because I think they weren't sure if Ray was going to make it. And they didn't want the blocks to look weird with one block yeah. missing one guy. Well, it, it would feel like, you know, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, they just wouldn't have Davy Boy in there for this if Ray had not been able to make it. Which, by the way, we have to give Ray a lot of credit. I mean, this is an oh, incredible yeah. recovery from his injury. To I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought it was possible. 
I said, I, and I remember what I was talking about it, and I said I thought there was a slight chance of it, and <laughs> you were like, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah, given, and even then, I, given, I, I thought given it, yeah. recovery times with similar yeah. injuries with other guys, other guys were out for months. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and like I said, I thought it was like a very low chance. Like, I, I wasn't saying it was going to happen at all. I thought it was like a super, I thought it was like a very slight possibility. For him to do it is an exceptional recovery story for him. Uh, so we really have to praise Ray Saito for being able to do that, uh, and, and for his body, for his courage to go out there, uh, and just determination not to miss this tournament. You would presume would be would be a big part of that. But it was just weird how they announced it. Was was it really that? Like was it that? You know, you didn't know one day, and then the next day you knew that he would he would be there. Yeah, it just feels a little weird. Like was it that cut and dry that you had like you mm. were a day away from it? I don't like why not just wait a couple of days to announce it? Then, then, that's, you know, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just it was weird, weird to me. It was weird. Um, a block. Yeah. This is definitely the better block in terms of wrestling because you have Aoyagi, Kento, Ashino in there right away. Yep. Uh, so those guys are pillars of this block that will carry it. And you also have with Hokuto Omori and Rene Abe two guys that want to elevate themselves, that need to elevate themselves, and that will work hard against the aforementioned three big guys in this block. Ayabe is an interesting one uh, because it looked like he they had that stuff with Ishikawa leaving. A lot of people speculated that he and was going to... And they teamed up recently, too. Yeah, yeah, but he's still here <laughs> in the carnival here. He's making his run here. Uh, should be interesting to see what he brings to the table. <laughs> he actually would have fit better in the other block, uh, in my opinion, uh, if, you, if you look at it just stylistically. But here he gets to be the one big guy in the block, mm -hmm. so we kind of see two different. Uh, yeah, Davy Boy is pretty tall too. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a big guy too, but I wouldn't say he's a giant. Like you know, yeah. I I be supposed yeah. to be the big guy. That's right. Let's uh, see how tall Davy is. Yeah, how tall is is Davy Boy? Davy Boy Smith Jr. He is. Six five. Yeah, he should height. be taller. Yeah, I think he's like six seven. So it's not wildly different. Yeah, he's six seven. Yes. Yeah, it's not wildly different. Uh, you could say there. They'll, they'll be two big guys. That should be a good match <laughs> between them. Cyrus, another big powerhouse type of dude mm -hmm. here as well. Um, and then you've got Kuroshio, who I, <laughs> sure. we know what I think about him <laughs> uh, overall. The thing is. I'm all about different styles in tournaments. If I were to book any kind of tournament like this, a G1 or a carnival, I would purposely have a junior guy. I would have a flash pin guy, a technical guy, a comedy guy. I want all the styles in the tournament. Uh, so I'm okay with one goofy guy uh, here. It's just he sucks at it, <laughs> in my opinion, uh, that I don't like. But still, Ashino, Miyahara, Ayagi, they're great. Omori, I like a lot. I think that they've really, like, if I wish that they would have continued his run after the tag league so much, uh, and the match he had with Nakajima was very much a red flag about how they see him, in my opinion. Uh, that was such a disappointment. That could have mm. been, that should have been the title match on this March show, is Omori going for the title and not Anzai. Instead, they have him have a five minute match where he basically got scored. Uh, yeah, that was. And, and given that, I was shocked that he was announced for the champion carnival. And he bodies. <laughs> yeah, but they could have like put some other dude in there. They could have gone. I don't know. Uh, Dan Tamura, Sego Tachibana, for example. Yeah, you it's don't not... know is the right answer because those guys aren't any higher. Than yeah, them. but they are. They are not lower either. They are not losing to Nakajima in five minutes. They actually had some wins in the last couple of months in comparison to Okoto Mori. But they're junior heavyweights. Sure. I mean, I, I like I like Sego's run. Yeah. Okay, well, unless we forget uh, who was the top defender. Of Jiro Kinomoto. is a junior too. Jiro's not a junior. He's always been a pushed as a heavyweight. He's been pushed as a heavyweight. Yeah, that's that's true. But is is like Sego Tachibana? Is he considered a junior heavyweight? That's a good point, actually, because they kind of have him as the the TV champion. He never wrestled in the junior division. Yeah, good point, actually. Yeah. But I mean, Omori has been pushed more than Tachibana. I'm sure, that's, even with, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. like he won the tag league. Like he has to be in the tournament. And it's been in December, and ever since he's yeah, uh, fallen off pretty heavily. A, I know, I know, and I, I just don't. I don't understand why. What's wrong with him that they that they don't? They saw enough to put him in the tag league and win him, have him win. 
Yeah. I like him though. I still like him as a worker. Sure, he's good. He's good. Yeah, but yeah it's he a... is just a, a warm body at this point. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a it's a good it's a good plug though. Yeah. Lock what do you B. think about Davy? Like, oh, what what, it, what are your expectations for Davy? Uh, not very high actually. Yeah. I... <laughs> he was in the champion. He was in the G1 climax over ten years ago, and he's uh, thirty seven. Oh, he's not that old, but he has mileage. He's another guy that started really young. Yeah, uh, him and T- yeah, him and TJ started when they were like kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, TJ Wilson, um, but yeah, I remember a long time ago when he first left New Japan. You speculated that he should go to All Japan. Yep, and I, it took him a little while to him, get here. Yeah, he went to WWE <laughs> in between that right, and did literally nothing. He signed yeah. and then never actually did it, wrestled a single <laughs> match for them. So, yeah, my my expectations are not high. He is a very yeah. decent guy. Um, he knows what to do inside the ring, but I, I don't expect any any match of the year bangers. No, he's. I always thought about this this about him, even in New Japan, that he a technically proficient worker and a good little bruiser guy, but so there's just there's a lot of substance, but not a lot of sizzle. You know, no like mm. no flash uh, yeah, yeah, to him. That's right. So, that's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, pretty much. So that's kind of how I feel about him. I think he's a good guy to have at the like a bottom guy on the block because he's got the size where he could beat people and even out points. And he's not going to have bad matches, but I wouldn't put him as a main event guy or anything like that. I think he's a guy to even out the block, not be a star player. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. What would be good? Back? Yeah. Zuwama, Jun Saito, Rei Saito, Kuyokyo Honda, Yuma Anzai, Hideki Suzuki, Hartley Jackson, and Lord Crew. Have you ever seen a match of Lord Cruz? I had never heard of this man in my life. Me neither. And I'm not going to check him out. I want to see what this guy is all about when he makes his first impression in All Japan Pro Wrestling. If you look at him, though, he fits in with this block, exactly. which is big guys. Big <laughs> like, guys like, hmm? Yeah. <laughs> I think they really did a mistake having Anzai in this block, actually. Uh, I would have switched him with either Cyrus or Ayabe. Uh, or Jiro. <laughs> move Jiro here and have him get beat up by all the big guys would have been my move. Uh, I think they put Anzai in this block specifically to have him all this mat- these matches where he can work from underneath against the big guys. I agree. And I think ultimately it, it will pay off in the end if you look at the, his final match. Like I think that they do have a plan for him. Uh, yeah. But uh, I think that just stylistically, he's a guy, to me, he's one of the best workers. Again, I don't think he's learning anything. I think he's a better worker than most of these guys, <laughs> like, actually, uh, in, in my opinion. So I don't think his, his, his match quality may be limited, but he's so talented that he can absolutely make it work, being the underdog guy. And if anything, I think the fans will rally behind that in this block. So it, they might have outsmarted me on this one a little bit. I, I have to give them that on paper. We'll have to see how it plays out. Yeah, what about Hideki in this block? To me, his only things here are with Anzai and Suwama uh, yeah. on there. Did you see where they they had the these like reporters or whatever reported? They called him Masua here. No, <laughs> Masua. <laughs> it's hilarious. Why? Why is that? How lazy can you be? Why? Masua. <laughs> it was like the these like the big accounts that don't follow Japanese wrestling. They cover AEW, WWE, and all that. I see. <laughs> they would post like, "Oh, new champion carnival lineup," and I saw it. It was like Masuma, <laughs> and I was like, "What the hell?" It is. Uh, it is actually one of the uh, wrong translations that come up when you translate. Yeah, yeah, they machine, didn't know that. Though. Machine <laughs> translates Suwama's name. Yeah. I think Ryuki Honda had another one that like it was it messed up his name too. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sometimes sometimes the um, name that comes up is something like uh, Tatsuki Honda or something like that. Yeah, like I said, we translated this stuff before, so we're familiar and know the the pitfalls. But they didn't know better. <laughs> that's the problem. Whoever did those results, but Masuma. <laughs> like, that's what I'm gonna call him forever now. Masuma. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the translation for Seki Yoshioka's name always confuses me because it it is Yoki. Yoshioka, and it's very similar to the Dragon Gate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I'm very, I'm very happy Seiki's in 
yeah. than all Japan lately. I think he's a great addition to the junior division as well. I hope he gets a title shot uh, very soon. Uh, but yeah, another one is like whenever you like, if you just look at the matches, especially if you're putting stuff in like cage match and stuff, if you go to the the translations, it'll be like shrimp hardening will <laughs> be the, the, the translation from pin. Exactly. <laughs> it's very funny. But uh, this block though. Uh, lots of big guys. Hideki, great wrestler. Hate his team with Suwama. I think it's a total waste of time with him. In this matchup, though, or in this block, you get matches with Anzai and Honda, which should both be great. Uh, the Suwama match was really underwhelming and not that great, in my opinion. Their, their singles match that they had in February. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's made for him to get a win back here, pretty much, uh, from, from the, the loss he took. And other than that, I don't think he really... I don't... He's got good size to him. It's not that he's small. But he's not like a giant either, no, uh, no. you know. So he's kind of in a weird spot in this block as well. They should have moved Anzai and Hideki into A block and put Cyrus and Ayabe in mm-hmm. here, or yeah, da- or Davy yeah. Boy. But they, they, they need the story with Hideki and Suwama though, so I, I yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. And they I get it. they are hell bent on having the Saitos in the same block. They want to do that. Uh, <laughs> they want to keep that alive. That they. Are brothers and that they are a tag team, but they also fight. That's the that's the idea that they go with. I just want them to have normal matches. Like if we get to see Ray like he was in the DDT tournament, mm-hmm. I think that could be really good. If they do stuff with um, uh, Commander Taru or whatever, <laughs> Com- I, Commander in Chief to you. Well, not to me. <laughs> I don't, I don't but if they do a bunch of stuff with that throughout the tournament. That could really wreck this B block because uh, if, if, they're both in the same block. Uh, if they're both doing crazy stuff, I think that's going to be hurting. And like I said, this is not a work rate block. Ultimately, this is no. a beef block yes. here. That is the the power of this block. Literally, you want the beef guys. And I'll say this about Lord Crew: I haven't seen him wrestle, but I did a little research about him. I think this guy has a like everything I've seen on a lot of his interviews and, and how he talks and. I think he has a really great head on his shoulders uh, for, for this business. I was really impressed with his personality that he showed. I, I saw a little bit about him and, and stuff. He was helping out the elderly in his town. Uh, you know, he wrestled in Cincinnati. He seems like a really cool guy, and I'm hoping that he comes in and does some big things uh, in here. Again, I've never seen him wrestle in my life. He's like an Ohio indie uh, wrestler. have no idea how <laughs> that, that this happened, uh, <laughs> you know, like how he got here. But I'm rooting for him to do some big things. And and we always see new guys. Look at Davidson last year. That's a guy nobody knew about. Ryan Davidson, and, and, yes. Yeah. And he did he did pretty good. Like in, in there. And that's all Japan's really good about finding these hidden gems, kinda. Like, you know, like guys that nobody knows about, but they come in, they do some big things, and hopefully Crew could be another one. I mean it's a weird name too, I have to say. If I were yeah. Lord the, arrest, Crew. Yeah. yeah, Lord Crew. Uh, I I don't know about that one. <laughs> but uh, we'll see what he can do in the wrestling. And, you know, Hartley, he's big. You got the Saitos, that's beef. Suwama's coming in. So it's a, very much a beef block. Uh, and I think that a lot of it, what do you think when you look at these blocks? Who are the contenders to make the finals? So, final days. <laughs> that's what we, this is the tra- <laughs> Eastern Lariat tradition. <laughs> the cheat code is active the once again. The cheat code. We have Yuma Anzai against Hideki Suzuki in block B. And Suwama versus Jun Saito in block, in, in, uh, yeah, in the same block, of course. Uh, then Ray Saito versus Ryukyu Honda and Hartley Jackson versus Lord Crew. So it comes down to the aforementioned matches, Suwama and Jun against, uh, yeah, Suwama against Jun and Anzai against Hideki. I think they want to go with Suwama in this block. I exactly think that's what's going to happen. As I mentioned, I think Anzai, his goal in this tournament is for Hideki on the last night. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't think he has any chance of winning the tournament, but I think him getting the win over Hideki will be his win, pretty yeah, much. It's a, and that's a pretty significant win, given that Hideki yeah. doesn't lose a lot, except to Suwama, unfortunately. Yeah. And he's also yes. the tag, the tag, uh, the the pin eater in their team as well. <laughs> sure. But, uh, but yes, uh, it still will be a nice deal. I wish that they would have gotten here a better way than the Hideki Suwama team. But that match could be fire. Uh, Remember him versus Kaito in the Noah final of the the M1. Right. right that right. was a fantastic that's, match. That's the foil for this one too. Exactly. Like that, that I think that they're going to run that same playbook just in the block final instead. Yeah. Yuma will eliminate Hideki and Suwama will advance. So, block A, we have uh, Kurashio against Ayabe, Ashino against Cyrus, 
Yuma Oyagi against Tokuto Omori and Kento Miyahara against Davy Boy Smith Jr. And I think Davy Boy will be in contention, but eventually Kento Miyahara will make the final. And they have a similar story. Omori will eliminate Aoyagi and Kento right. will advance. Like, it's basically the same thing back and forth. Yeah. I, I think it makes perfect sense. The other two matches, I do think Ray and Honda, like one, of, one or both of them could be in contention on the final day. I don't think either of them are going to win, but I do think that they will give respect to those guys, especially uh, yeah. Ray, who is like who will be a tag champion in all likelihood there. And this block, I think it's clear cut. The last two matches are going to be there, and I think Kento will win uh, the, the A block. It, it seems yeah. perfect. And like you said, I think they'll protect Davy Boy and make Kento beating him like because I mean this is a fresh matchup for him as well, which you don't get a lot of those with Kento. And I think it was smart to put him on the last night. Yes. So we both have Kento and Suwama. (laughs) Exactly, yes. (laughs) Makes the most sense, given what they do. Yeah. I could also see Andai getting a draw with Hideki if they want to extend that a little bit. Sure. Uh, But I think it's better just have Andai win. Yeah. So what do you think? Who's going to win, then? Kento or Suwama? Well, um, I think Suwama. Yeah, me too. For whatever reason... They did the Kento deal. He lost twice, and then <laughs> that's it. Two. I think that's. I think that's such. If that plays out that way, like how it's kind of like I'm kind of leaning to it playing out, with Suwama winning this, beating Nakajima, and then Nakajima going away. I think that's such a disastrous decision. Yeah. <laughs> like how, how, how they, they so, use absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Like to, to have him go over Kento twice, and then for having him to have him leave. I think would be a terrible, terrible <laughs> mistake uh, o- overall. But as it as it seems, that's the way that we're going because they haven't even teased anything between Nakajima and Miyahara in the last yeah. couple of months. That's exactly right. Uh, Nor have they teased anything with, for example, Yuma Oyagi, who should get the win back too. Yeah, he's another guy. Like he's been really deep pushed. Uh, the last few months, uh, Yagi has. But he's always the most popular guy in, in any match that he's in. But because he's a fantastic performer and one yep. of the best in the world, and why I voted him MVP last year uh, <laughs> there. How good was that match he had with Takeshita? Oh, he, man, yes. Great match on the DDT show. Loved it. He stole the show. Like, he, he was the one that went to the fans. Like, right? like he had oh, to think with the fans. He's so great with the fans. He's such a great prick, and he did that with yes. his woman in the front row who was screaming her lungs out for Takashita. And uh, Aoyagi went there and looked at her and talked to her, and it was just amazing. He always does that, yeah. like with anybody. Like with Takeshita, he doesn't have a defining characteristic. Like, for example, when he was with Keno, he made fun of his fist pose. Mm-hmm. Uh, or like Muto, where he made fun of him. Takeshita <laughs> doesn't have anything like that for him to go after. So instead, he went after his fan in the crowd that he was invading. It was so freaking good. Aoyagi, I love this man so much. Man, like One of the, the best workers. He should be winning this tournament. But... He should be winning the tournament. I totally agree with that. Like, uh, you know, if it were up to me... And they told me, like, this is it. Nakajima's going away. We have to get the title off of him. And he, the one who wins the tournament will do it. Aoyagi is winning the tournament in my version. I don't care. Like, who put him as the champion? He was doing great as champion anyway. They got derailed uh, for Nakajima. <laughs> and I think Aoyagi, I think the world of him as a performer. A- absolutely. But I do think ultimately it will be Kento. Uh, unfortunately, and, and it's not nothing against Kento. Like he's great. Uh, I will say too, Kento and Suwama is not a final that gets my juices pumping. <laughs> <laughs> but Suwama yeah. gets anybody doesn't get my juices pumping. So that's, yeah. it. that's it, it. It could be Kento and Anzai. Maybe this maybe this, <sighs> maybe. this Suwama thing is just a way to distract us from from Kento and Anzai. I think if the, if Kento is winning the tournament, which I do think he's the like the only other person I would say would be a favorite yeah. um, to win. I think it would be more likely that Hideki would be an eye and get to the final. Mm-hmm. And you could do Kento and Hideki because that's a match that they haven't done either. That's right. Yeah. And this would be a great time to do it. Uh, it's tough because we know Hideki probably won't win that match. Uh, like, you know, and I think there's much more likely Suwama could win against Kento than Hideki. Hideki and Nakajima, that's a match that they they could do if they wanted. I mean, I don't think he's going to win the tournament, but... 
I think it's interesting that they haven't t- t- so, tested that because they have so much history with each other from Noah. It's that's true, but the problem here would be that this match would have to go to a sixty-minute time limit draw. Maybe. I mean, I, well, it's Nakajima, so it's, uh, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Hideki won't let Nakajima because, like, Hideki's not. It's not like he's buried people, or, like, are forced no, his no. way in. Like, you know, I think that's he's, kind of a weird reputation. And it's has. no, no, it's actually a very smart way to go about him. He's picking the right spots to lose. Yeah, to. yeah. I don't. I, if you're talking political guys, I look at his partner way worse than, than <laughs> him. Yeah, well, like, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, but and like I said, I I don't think Hideki will win. I I thought that would be a great match. I loved their matches in the past, though Hideki and Nakajima. I thought they were a, a fantastic wrestling matches. I would love to see again, and they have done the draw in the past too. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it's just Nakajima. He, he refuses to, and maybe that's another political problem. But regardless, yeah, Suwama would be my pick. But I don't think it's impossible that Kento doesn't just get it. I, I think the best possible circumstance is that Kento wins and gets his win back over, over Nakajima. Or a win, at least. Maybe not both of them. That would be uh, the best. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the best possible scenario of what we have would be that, yeah. yeah well, we want Aoyaki to win. If, if it were our dream come true, that would be what I would do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think Kento winning, I just don't want to see Suwama be the one to vanquish Nakajima. I don't think there's any upside to that. Well, let's, uh, let's hope. Let's hope for Kento. Yeah, I'm for it. <clears throat> Again, that's like the thing with Kento. It's a great story. They've had fantastic matches. Both the Nakajima matches were great. But it is a little old hat to go to him again, like as as the champion. Mm. Yeah. So it, it is something they've kind of booked themselves into a multiple corners at once and we'll see if they get out of it or not i'm not like completely down on this but i'm not excited about this like tournament either we'll we'll, we'll see what ideas they come up with during the tournament i'm uh, hopeful at least that in the end we come up with some guys elevating each other i said it here in block a yeah. with omori and ayabe and of course we still have the saitos honda anza in block b there is some chances for these guys to take advantage of these uh, to impress the higher ups in this company. And let's not forget, last year's tournament was not a great no. champion carnival no. overall. Like it, it ended well. Proof. Yeah, it ended well enough with Ashino getting a huge win. Like I don't think nobody expected that. Yeah. In. Unfortunately, the injury happened <laughs> with that. But it was a great until after the show. Everything was great with the final. The tournament itself was not well regarded. And I think this whole company, you look at the top guys, and there's a lot of great talent. Death has been an issue for a while. Mm. Who is going to step up to really even things out in these blocks? I think they need some guys who we're not expecting. And hopefully, like the Saitos could be that <laughs> in B block. Uh, maybe Lord Crew makes a big statement coming in. Yeah, uh, uh, they who need- knows? Yeah, exactly. Like, well, like I said, we never seen him, so so we, yeah. we don't know. <laughs> um, but maybe in the A block, like you said, Ayabe, could this be a, his breakout? Uh, you know, he gets some moments. Uh, I think that they need some people like that to really rise up. It can't just be Kento and Yuma carrying the tournament like they've done uh, so much in the past, and maybe Anzai and B block do, doing his best. They need more from the other guys. Yes. So this tournament is starting on April 18. And running all the way until May 12th in Yokohama Buntai, where they have the finals. The block finals will be on May 4 in Sanyo and on May 6 in Kurken Hall. And that's the Champion Carnival. And Dylan, uh, that is also the Eastern Lariat, a very long episode. We had a lot to talk about with these three companies, and I'm very glad that we didn't talk about any others, <laughs> given the extent that we talked about them. No, these are the big stories happening right now in Japan, to be honest. Uh, we did talk a little bit about certain things like with DG and, and DDT. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, it's not like we forgot about them. It's just these things are like, you know... The things happen, right? Now, these are the happenings. Happen. <laughs> yeah. Now, hopefully, like, uh, I did notice, too, about the Champion Carnival. <laughs> a little bit later than usual, it feels like. Like they, It feels like last year was around the 4th or the 5th. They usually have the final. And this year, they took a week back. So a little bit of a note mm-hmm. there to, to look mm-hmm, at. Mm-hmm. 
right? Uh, you know, yeah, yeah outside yeah, of so, Golden Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that's interesting that they they did that. Right. But we'll see how it plays out, and hopefully, all of these companies, like I said, I think with Stardom, we were not negative. It was more confused, <laughs> like you know, like there's questions. We're yeah, asking questions. Yeah, yeah. With New Japan, I think we're definitely negative <laughs> on it right now because of a, a lot of reasons, and justifiably so. All Japan's another one of those. It, it feels like, like I said, I'm not negative, but I'm also not excited, if that makes sense. Mm, yeah, like you it, said, it to- totally makes sense. Yeah, and it kind of makes sense what you said. Like, it's not, like, it's, like, the stuff they're doing is working, ultimately, but it feels like it could be more or cooler, as, as you said. Mm. Uh, uh, there it could be it could be a little bit cooler so we'll see if the the carnival and a great way to do it is a tournament to rack things up so very excited about the future very excited to be back like i said i really missed you a lot uh i missed doing the show and hopefully all you guys listening uh sorry to keep you guys waiting i really apologize uh i wish that i had done something in between uh you know i did a bunch of stuff on the patreon if you guys want to follow that not covering these tournaments and even the noah tournament i did one on as well so uh check that out and uh we won't be gone so long we won't be strangers no more this time we're gonna yes. be, be back much sooner that is definitely correct so thank you all for listening to the show and staying until the end of the show this has been the eastern area goodbye sayonara <laughs>